I've, I've tried doing this as the sole episodes too, but just this record in the morning. Yeah. Like morning coffee, sit down like nine to 11, record an episode. And, and that's, that's like the scheduled time. But I feel like the last few times we've done it, it's been like weight launch, eat a bunch of food, mm -hmm. like order out, eat a bunch of food. And then by then it's like afternoon coffee time. And even though we just ate, it's like, well, we better get a coffee. Yeah. <laughs> and then now we've got like a ton of food and coffee. And it's like, let's record a podcast. So yeah. our body's going, burr, 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 burr. <laughs> I'm like, let's just put a microphone right, right near my sternum and let's everybody listen to what's going on in there. Yeah, that's fine. So I'm always, the last few episodes, even as I'm talking, I can feel that bubble coming up in my throat and I'm trying to continue talking and I'm like, oh, let's go. And I got to like duck away and burp or something. <laughs> <That was not> <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is an anatomy podcast. Listen to our bodies do their miraculous things. Why'd you have to get such good mics that pick up all of our throat burps noises? Because Joe Rogan has these microphones. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, for anyone listening, oh, yeah, no. I have a I have a recording studio here, and the um, the Shure SM7Bs have been a dream microphone of mine for years. These have been a microphone that I've wanted for tracking vocals and uh, my guitar work for years, but they're far too expensive for just that. Yeah, I wasn't like recording. I wasn't recording like I used to back in the day. You know, back between like 04 and 09 when I didn't have money for these microphones, but I really could have used them because I was recording all the time. Right. And um, so, yeah, when I pulled the trigger on the podcast, I mean, these microphones have been out for a while. So it's 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 nice to know. It was nice to see what bigger podcasts were using for gear, obviously, to kind of do some market surveying as far as like what kind of gear people are using. Yeah. But I already knew that the SM7B was going to be the microphone I was going to be buying because... <clears throat> Cause it was one that I needed in the studio anyway. Yeah. And I've utilized it for any of the stuff I've been tracking uh, for the rising sea stuff anyway. And I'm so happy I finally have it. When I pulled the trigger on these microphones and everything, I mean, I spent like five grand on everything. And I'm like, this isn't going to pay me any money. I mean, hopefully someday in the future, but for the foreseeable future, this is just like an investment with no ROI on the horizon. So it was like a hard hit. I'm like, man, I don't know if I should be doing this. Yeah. But now that the gear's here, and like that, that money's gone and I sleep okay at night now. It's so awesome to come in here. And if I want to like track some guitar stuff, I don't, I used to just direct plug in to my interface yeah, and bypass my beautiful California built Fender deluxe, you know, four by 10 amp, like tube amp. Mm -hmm. And I play Fender guitars. So that setup, that guitar through that amp is like the most beautiful sounding setup for the type of music I play. And I, I always felt cheated because I was bypassing that connection altogether and going right into digital on my computer. Right. Because I didn't have a good microphone. I had an SM57 that is okay. But now that I've got these microphones, I'm like, yeah, I am going to be tracking like proper analog, like guitar work a lot now. Yeah. So, yeah. So sorry about having a nice microphone that picks up your burps and giggles. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. It's quite all right. I'm wearing a white hat right now. You are. I don't think I've ever worn a white hat. New old stock. Yeah, this is 1993. Good yeah. year. So anyone listening on Spotify or wherever can't see this. But I'm always wearing black shirts or white shirts. So black and white is the is the uh, is the reoccurring theme. It's the palette. It's it's my <laughs> color palette for sure. And since I'm color deficient, it's the best yeah. palette that works for me because yeah. I don't get caught wearing wrong matching colors or whatever or <laughs> mix matching. So. Yeah, my dad was throwing away a garbage bag full of old hats. Some he had worn, some that were just old hats that he never wore that were like still brand new. And, you know, I live in the house that I grew up in. And so downstairs is divided. Downstairs is my laser shop, which used to be my mom's bakery because my That's mom right. had like a professional or industrial. I shouldn't say industrial. It was. It was a professional bakery. She... Yeah. Baked pies and cookies and stuff and sold it to all the local farm stands and grocery stores. Yeah. And, as, as industrial as an at-home bakery yes. gets. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. With an oven and an industrial mixer and 220 power and mm -hmm. you know, the works. So now it's my laser shop. But on the other side of the basement is just storage for both my stuff and my parents. You know, my parents have the house up the street. So it's still kind of serving as some storage for some stuff. So he was cleaning a lot of that out last year. He's cleaning a lot of stuff out that 
really just he couldn't care less about keeping just underfoot now and just taking up space so he's throwing stuff out mm -hmm. and uh he knew that i was aggressively on the hunt for any remaining uh of the ludwig's custom exhaust snapback hats that he had made in like the 80s that's right and i found one that was unworn in like a box somewhere here in the house downstairs somewhere and i wore it and it was like i wore it like it was an extension of my body i <laughs> i loved that thing it was a black five panel snapback with ludwig's custom exhaust embroidered in yellow and my dad used to have boxes of them but mm -hmm. over the years they've either just gotten tossed out or worn whatever so and i wore it into the ground unfortunately i i wore it in the rain at h2o in 2015 and 16 there's yeah. photos of me like in the porn rain wearing it and, oh yeah and then like the plastic on the snapback broke and i like i like poly epoxied it back together or ac acrylic welded it i used that that like welding solution yeah and um that kind of held it over for a little bit and then like i said that bleach solution i was running through my laser machine water coolant like a fitting exploded and i got covered in bleach water and it's just got white spots all over it now yeah so it, it, the hat is just completely destroyed yeah it's, it's seen the miles yes it, it's only on the shelf downstairs in the shop because i'm too sentimentally attached to it to throw it out even mm -hmm. though it's not wearable like that, <laughs> even as disgusting as it looks everything's all torn and ripped apart on it yeah so i've been searching for more of them and there weren't any so my dad had this big garbage bag full of hats and he's like i'm literally gonna throw this in a dumpster rifle through them see if there's anything you want i grabbed that bag and looked in it and it was as if it was like, I can't remember how old I was, but it was like the Christmas morning that a Sega Genesis was under the tree. Oh, yeah. Like, I'll never forget that. Yeah. I, like I said, I couldn't tell you how old I was. But when we, we were pretty like prudent family. Like my dad, like oh, we, we were, we were well taken care of and we did Disney World once a year. You know, like, like yeah, it yeah. was, you know, my dad worked hard to make sure we had like a, a good childhood, but we, we weren't spoiled by like all the electronics that I wanted as a kid. Right, you know, like we didn't have the latest and greatest, you know, just because it was the in thing to have so oh there's more coffee <laughs> um so yeah we got i mean we got a sega genesis one year with like sonic the hedgehog and oh, like yeah. maybe nba jam or something and i couldn't believe it and my dad unplugged that thing more times than i can remember because i was just completely <laughs> glued to it my mom would be calling for supper and i'm just playing because you couldn't there was no memory cards back then right you right. couldn't save and i'm trying to beat dr robotnik on like on like um Oh, what's the name of that level? I've had I had a level off the top of my I head, don't. and I was gonna sound so intelligent by naming <laughs> that level right off the top of my head, and I can't remember it now. Anyway, it was like a I flying fortress. Know. Like the last the last level on Sonic Two is like flying fortress. Yeah, and I'm getting goosebumps thinking back about this <laughs> because there's no memory card when yeah. you reached flying fortress, the flying fortress level. Not because you had to you had to defeat Doctor Robotnik at the end of each level. Mm -hmm. So you you met like the end boss on each level, but each level he got harder and harder to yeah, beat. Yeah, of course. And he his tactics were different, and you couldn't die. Like you went back to level one. Like there's no <laughs> yeah. shutting the game off and starting again tomorrow, and picking up where you left off. Like you were committed. Like you sat down and you played this thing through. Oh yeah. So I remember getting to like Flying Fortress a few times. And my my parents were like. Time to go to bed or whatever. And I'm like, you don't understand. <laughs> you don't understand. You just don't. And then they yeah. would get turned off. And Yep. Pulled the plug on you. But I knew better than to throw a fit if my dad did that. Oh, yeah. I knew better. Yep. My dad's belt had come off plenty of times. <laughs> like if I had disrespected or talked back to my mom or oh, geez, didn't listen yeah. to what he was telling me. It was a last resort, but it came to that resort a few times. Yep. But that straightened me right out. And I didn't ever talk back ever again. But yeah. So anyway. Uh, looking in that garbage bag full of hats, I I couldn't believe. I couldn't believe he was gonna throw those hats out. I'm like, and, but he knew. He knew that I'm into vintage stuff and vintage hats and vintage shirts. Like he just knew I was into that stuff. Yeah. And I looked through it. I wish I. Could, I mean, I wish this had a better. If I had different cameras, like closer up angles and stuff, I would go through each hat and yeah, talk about right. each one. Because like I said, there's some that he's worn that are still wearable, but they're like pretty worn in and they have a story. Then there's other ones that are like new old stock that I've been wearing more. So the one I'm wearing, my dad opened a second location of his garage in the early nineties. So the garage in the backyard here, that's that's our hobby shop now, uh, he used as like the impound a lot for the towing business. And the two bay garage was used as like um, indoor storage, like lockable storage. Like if there was like a, if there was like a fatal car crash or yeah. something that some you know the they had to come investigate you know or search the vehicle for 
drugs or whatever, um, he would use the garage to like put something in and under lock and key. Yep. So he rented a garage out here in my town that the building is still standing, but it's not a garage anymore. But it was a little garage right on the lake here in town that was a sit go station, had two pumps. And so he, he took over the garage and the gas station aspect of it. So he ran his maintenance business, you know, the automotive maintenance business out of the garage and then hired a guy to like run the pumps. Yeah. And it was a sit go station. So he would always receive like sit go merchandise oh, yeah. to both sell or just as gift packages because you were part of the sit go family in that sense or whatever. Mm hmm. So the hat I'm wearing right now is roughly 1992 or 93. It's white. It's got Sitgo's logo and the eagle on it. Yes. <laughs> and what does it say on it? Fly with the new superpower. You darn tootin'. <laughs> <laughs> so Sitgo was city service before it was Sitgo. And oddly enough, my dad collects city service mem memorabilia. That's right. And even crazier, the garage that he bought in town, not the Sitgo station, but that porcelain sided three bay garage that he bought here in town, right at the center lights in, in downtown Meredith, was built in 1948 and it's still got the original porcelain siding, yes. the rounded edges, all the porcelain siding. Mm -hmm. And it was a city service station in the 50s. Yes. And the city service, their colors were green and white. And the the stripes on the building, as well as the city service logo in the middle, it's baked into the porcelain. So you can't right. you can't like scrape it off or anything. Yep. So that all those stripes had been painted over at some point once it was no longer a city service station in like the 60s or 70s or something. And when my dad bought the building and he ended up closing his business down and then the shop just became like storage and just hobby stuff for himself and luckily some of my cars, yep. he um, stripped all the paint off the porcelain, revealing the original green stripes and city service logo. Yeah, it's and, so cool. And and it's it's... It's so cool because he'd already been into city service stuff and collected city service, like, um, Petrolana, Pe Petrolana, however you pronounce that, like Americana, but petrol, like, yeah. like car, you know, the gas, gas pumps and all that sort of stuff, yep. oil cans, all mm -hmm. that stuff. Um, it's always been city service because it's like harder to find. It's not as accessible as like Exxon or mobile right, or right. All, all that stuff. And or oil zone, you see a lot of oil zone stuff. But oddly enough, the building that he worked out of was a city service garage. Yeah. And it still has the original porcelain siding with the logo on it. Yeah, it's crazy. Which is really, really cool. Um, but the garage he ran out of there before, or the other garage was a Sitgo. So oddly enough, we, we had a lot of uh, weird ties with Sitgo and city service. Yeah. And so with the hats, there were, there were a few Sitgo hats in there. And, and this hat was a new old stock hat. <laughs> it's a white five panel snapback with the rope, with the white rope embroidered sit go fly with the new superpower heck yeah i love it so much but i can't wear white hats i told you if i go outside I with this it's immediately going to be like dirty somehow i know <laughs> and if i touch it with my hands because it's all white yeah i'm the same way yeah. i know i love vintage hats so much but i don't dare wear there's like a there's like a a quintessential red marlboro like f1 yes hat it's got the indy car on the marble and it's it's, it's red and it, it's it's a beautiful hat I was showing Ben Walker on Zoom the other night. <laughs> so yeah, so Ben from England is into all that stuff too. And I was showing him each hat. I was telling you earlier, like I was going through each hat right on Zoom, like holding it up to the laptop. And each one I'd set, I'd laid them out because I knew he was going to appreciate this. I yeah. laid them out in like levels of like, this is a level two. Starting this one's a level bottom, four. Yeah. yeah, I was I was saving the holy grail for the end. And each one I was holding up to the up to the uh, camera on the iMac there. Ben just kept going. Oh my god, I can't do his accent, but it's like you know what? You yeah, can yeah. hear him. Oh my god, so I can't do it really yeah, either, but. <laughs> but so funny. And then finally, I get to the holy grail Goodyear one. Yeah, the new old stock like '70s Goodyear with the stripes all the way around and across the visor. Never been worn. <laughs> And I searched eBay for a good while looking for that hat, that particular hat, mm -hmm. and I couldn't find it. So I bought like a mesh, like an 80s Goodyear hat. It, was, it wasn't the one I was looking for, but it was close enough. Yeah. It was mesh and had foam, but because it was 30 something years old, when I got it and started wearing it, all the foam was falling out of it. Right. And it, just, it wasn't, it was old. Yeah. But that old foam didn't, didn't stand up. So the one I was looking for was the one that was lo and behold, in that bag in the basement all the time the whole, the whole time, time. <laughs> and it's never been worn it's a new old stock hat yep i put it on every now and then and i'm like nope i'm saving that hat. i'm not gonna <laughs> yeah. i won't leave the house every now and then i'll just wear it I, normally i don't wear any hats in the house but every now and then i'll just put it on so it like it like fits to my head right it's like a new hat 
So I'll just wear it around the house every now and then just so it like wears into me. But <laughs> I'm going to like, that's going to be on the, like, I want to, I'd like to build some like shadow box, maybe not with a glass front, but like a shadow box uh, for each of the hats and like have maybe in the studio or yeah, maybe in the living room. I don't know, but it, that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, it'd be definitely cool. I want to do that with the hats and the steering wheels. That's right. Yeah. yeah so I still have all the steering wheels. I'm a steering wheel nerd. <laughs> I would go broke buying steering wheels. I really would. Anyone listening, if you want some rare Volkswagen steering wheels, I'd probably sell some of the Mark 1s. Yeah. I listed them a while ago, but then yeah. I, I took them down because I'm like, eh, I kind of like them. Because <laughs> yeah. I'd like them hanging up yep. on the wall. Decorations. That Alpina one, though, not only is it an Alpina, uh, like an early 80s, came out of an 81, but not only, I don't think the steering wheels were different per platform BMW they were in. I think they were just a four-spoke Alpina wheel. Yeah. You know, made by Momo. Yeah. Like proper, like, Italy. Yeah, yeah, Italy, Italian, proper Italian-made Momo Alpina steering wheels. But mine, the one I have, came out of an Alpina 7 Series. Yes. Yep, a B9 as well, not a B10. Yep, super B, rare. Yep, mega, mega rare. Shark nose B9. It's the original one. Needs All the leather work needs to be redone. That's how I got the steering wheels. The, the Alpina B9, you know, Shark 7 Series that it came out of, um, the guy was in the process of like trying to like restore it, so he bought either a refurbed or new old stock or just a better condition four spoke period correct alpina wheel for yeah. the car and so had the old one laying around and it's roach it's got like electrical tape wrapped around it it's just, oh yeah but the frame and the whole wheel is like in impeccable shape the center the horn button with like the leather that's around it with the alpina logo it's all perfect Jeez, all i'm sure perfect. that's the rare bit too the center horn yeah yeah because i'm horn sure that button. either gets lost or something yep and um all the engravings are still there the momo uh, engraving on the front and then the made in Italy engraving on the back with the oh, serial yeah. number. That's all still there. Dang. But luckily that's a flat steering wheel. So that's easier to hang up because that takes like the Momo collar, you know, that goes on to your column yeah, basically. So adapter. most of the Volkswagen steering wheels have like that big back to them. So they're tough to like hang mm -hmm. on the wall. You need to make some sort of, yeah, some sort of fixture in order for them to like lay flat yeah. and hang away from the wall or whatever. But yeah, plenty of stuff I want to get done. What's new? Nothing. We've only, we've, it's, it hasn't even been a week since we yeah, recorded last no, episode, I don't think. Nothing is new with me. We went, you went over to the unit with me today. Yeah. Yep. Checked out your possible new unit. Yeah. So a little bit of, a little bit of movement on that. I mean, I, I'm in touch with the landlord. I'm meeting up with his foreman tomorrow to walk the place. I mean, it's not that big. We're not going to like, it's not like <laughs> yeah. we're walking around a, a warehouse. Yeah. But um, yeah, they're refurbishing the place for me. Like That's full, super cool. Full refurbishment, floor, walls, plaster and paint on the walls, lighting, adding, and um, adding in a lift in for a you. Brand new two post That's lift. That's crazy. Yeah. Wherever I want it. Mm. And they're putting water in because in the building this is in, the last two units in this building don't have water. And mine's the first unit of those two yep. that didn't get the water. So the one next to me on one side does have water. And so I told them straight up, I said, it's got to have a bathroom and a sink. Like, I understand if you'd rather not go through that work of digging into the floor and bringing plumbing in and putting a toilet in and yeah. framing in a bathroom. I understand that. But if I'm going to go in there, like it's just, that just has to. And luckily I know Jeff, the next unit over. Yep. Who's, he goes, you could always use my bathroom. I'm like, yeah, but if it's like midnight and I'm down there yeah, working exactly. on something, like I, I just want to be able to wash my hands or, mm -hmm. or go to the bathroom. So I kind of threw that out there. He gave me a few options. He's like, you know, you can rent it as is for this. You can rent it with a brand new two post lift installed for this or you know, if you want to wait a few more weeks, we'll refurb the whole place and for this. And I was like, yeah, we might as well do that because I'll be happier in a nice painted like new shop space. I said, but I, I need a bathroom and a sink. Yeah. He goes, yeah, we can do that. Yeah. Because it, having having water and a bathroom in that unit makes it more desirable anyway, even if you're out of there at some point. Exactly. So. He, he's probably thinking he could rent it for more for someone exactly. after you if it had or those. easier or easier yeah. yeah if it had those amenities now so i'm happy he was into that and uh so yeah tomorrow i'm going to yeah that's why we laid out some measurements there today yeah. to figure out if the lift can go over here or over there and if i still have space for cars on either side of the lift for storage and workshop space and exactly all that so yeah excited i mean still still like you know i mean it's it's a it's a natural position to be in but i think it's I think to be financially terrified, for lack of a better word, to take something like this on. Yeah. I think it's, it only serves as like a motivational tool. Of course. To where it's like, all right, 
time to like focus and be serious and get this thing done. Yeah. So. Yeah. Cause I mean, even Jeff and Derek, the guys that you met today, mm -hmm. they're doing what we want to do or what we are doing by default. I mean, it's technically what I've been doing for 10 years now, but not soul. You know, yeah. I've always had like some sort of like other income, but they're just flipping cars and going after it. Yeah. You know, they'll drive to Oklahoma for an old Ford bump side or whatever, and then bring it back here and fix it up and sell it for a lot of money. And yeah, and they're doing it. And, and it's, you know, when I start to defeat myself a little bit or, or just for the sake of not having all the confidence in the world to go in head first and be like, I can totally do this. It's awesome listening to them tell their stories, but then be like, dude, if we can do it and, we're, and you know, they're in their fifties, they're like, you guys know how to use your yeah. phone in the internet. Man. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're like, they're like, you guys can, and you're not in, they're like, you guys aren't married or have any kids. Like you guys can like go get that car before exactly. anyone else goes and exactly. gets it. And yeah. So they're, they're throwing all these, like all these, yeah, but type of stories. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, you guys are right. Yeah. Cause they were saying part of the issues that they run into is not being able to get to a deal in time, in time. to make that deal. Yeah. Cause where, they got to get the kids to school or they yep. got to go to their job or they got to get the time away from the wife and yep. the kid. Yeah. Yep. Cause yeah. yeah. Cause maybe it's a Friday and they got, they want to move on something on Saturday and the wife's like, no, we're going apple picking tomorrow, yeah, yeah, exactly. whatever it might be. And if you go there, you're, we're getting divorced. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they hanged it over you. Yeah. So, yeah, so it's exciting. Uh, I'm going to meet up with the foreman there tomorrow. Yeah, we're going to sort out where the lift goes. And yeah, Jeff's other truck will be out of there at that point. Yeah, that's Get right. a better look at where stuff can go. And yeah, February 1st. Sounds like February 1st will be the moving day. I got my fingers crossed his crew works yeah. diligently on that and gets it done in time. Because we're already first weekend. Yeah, hopefully they can get the lift in time. I know everyone's fighting to get lifts right now. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's the hope. And I mean, hopefully it's not, it doesn't come down to like, well, I'll get this used one. It's like, yeah. Yeah, but if we wait one more week, we'll get the new one in. Right. Yeah, so I'll, I might have to cross that bridge when we get to it. But should be fine. Yeah, so that's really the only other update. Oh, if you guys are listening to this around, this is the 5th of January right now. If you're listening to this in the next week, at least through the 10th, shirts are at the printers right now for the Ludwig's Garage vintage shirts. Uh, I know you guys, the pre-order went in the week before Christmas, I think. And as you guys can only imagine, holidays, COVID, all this stuff, everything's taking so much slower, taking so much more time than, uh, than I really wanted it to. So mm -hmm. shirts are at the printers. I spoke with my buddy, Mark, Mark Gamma. He's printing all the shirts for me. Uh, everything's getting ordered and coming in. He's going to start production hopefully by the end of the week. Uh, I'm going to put a word out on Instagram so it's a little bit more like to the moment. But yeah, thanks for your patience. I've had a few people start to reach out the last couple of days being like, hey, so when are the shirts shipping? Yeah. They're 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 common. Trust me, I'd I'd be downstairs with a carousel printing on myself <laughs> like on shirts I just went and bought if I could get it done, you know, yeah. but hopefully soon. So that's about it for the news, I think. Yep. Yeah, let's talk about where the Z. Let's do it. Um, so worth is he, I mean, I wish I knew more about the show. If I'd done a little bit more homework, I didn't decide to like talk about this until like this morning when you're yeah. on your way up. It's like, yeah. let's just talk about our worth is he trip. Right. But without, without exhausting ourselves and everyone else about worth is he, it's basically the largest and most iconic Volkswagen show in the world. Yep. And it's been, it's been running since the eighties. Yep. And I think it's older than I am. I'm pretty sure it's, yeah. 84. Yes, because I believe it started that that was the show where GTI. GTI. Yes. Where that's where they unveiled the new GTI every year. Yeah. So 80, 81. Yeah. 82, maybe. Yep. 82 or 83 might have been the first GTI. Yeah. 83 and 84, right? For the US market. I don't know when. For the US. I know when Europe I know had the, it. Yeah. Yeah. Europe had it first. And I think, I think, I want to say it was 81. This is why I, I know we should have done the I'm research. Like, I think we just speculate all episode <laughs> long. People are just like quick Google search. Yeah. Like, oh, it was 81. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. So Volkswagen unveiled the GTI there. So it's, anyway, it's been a 30 year plus running show yeah. in South Austria. And as a Volkswagen enthusiast, as we both are, going to Werthersee has been almost like pilgrimage level. Absolutely. To not just see the Alps and see Werthersee. Because more often than not, if you fly, if you're going to fly directly there, you'd normally have to fly into Munich, yep. which is north of the Alps, and drive through the Alps down into Austria. So... Even if you fly, quote unquote, fly to Werthersee, you will see some of the most beautiful parts of Europe. Yeah, um, for sure. So that being said, for years, I've always wanted to go to Werthersee. 
as as everyone yeah. in America watching from afar this little lake town in Velden, Velden, Austria, uh, on Lake Wertesee, yeah. Wertesee. Wertesee. Um, yeah, it's like wow, one day I'd love, I'd love love to go there. So for 2015, 16, 17, I was going to England every summer and going for Players Classic and a few other shows and to just see history stuff too. Yeah. But all the while, uh, Wertesee was always uh, end of April, early May. Yeah. And Players Classic was always in June. So it was almost too far of a stretch to do one trip and stay there for both. Yeah. So I was like, well, one of these years I'm going to come over early and uh, and do Wertesee. So after going over to England for a few years and having met a lot of my like internet buddies in person and now I've, like we've become friends and we know each other in person now... Mm-hmm. Uh, I was like, yeah, we're ready. I'm going to, I got, I'd like to fly into England and meet up with all the England boys. Cause they all drive not. And we're used to that type of drive anyway. It's the equivalent of us driving to Florida. Yeah. It's like exactly. a 20 hour drive, 24 hour drive. There's just three different languages involved. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and, and just money exchange. And it's crazy. Everything. Yeah. Yeah. I mean the diverse social change driving from here to Florida is well, yeah, comparable. Yeah, I guess, but not close as far as like. <laughs> As far as culture goes, yeah, there's a culture change from here to Florida, but yeah. um, especially if you stop in West Virginia, but um, <laughs> which, which we don't, <laughs> not usually, not usually, not unless we really need uh, like sweet tea, Waffle House, or fuel. Yeah. Um. So yeah, so 2018, and you had been, you and I really started hanging out more at the end of like 2017. Yep, exactly. Um, more as in like doing more like automotive stuff and like going to shows and stuff like at the same i'd usually see you at shows but right exactly kind of commuting to these shows like together and um yeah you were like i gotta get over to england like, yeah I gotta yeah gotta go so 2018 where was the year where i was like i'm going to england whether i'm going to by myself not knowing anyone i'm just right. booking and i'm go. going mm-hmm. and yeah we were just here one night basically talking about that yep and that was going to be my fourth year yeah it was going to be my fourth year going to players and that and that's when i was like dude you should just just go with me i'm, yeah. I'm going to go to players and i've got friends over there i'm going to stay with and you're like yep i'm all in yeah then it quickly turned into like well i said well i remember laying it out to you i'm like listen <laughs> i've done players classic like three years in a row and jamie and carl are good friends now like I, yeah you know, and and i was like let's do Worthy. and you were just like yep yeah <laughs> like uh, i've yep. been i've been watching Worthy videos since 2012 like i need to go there yeah yep. i mean i remember watching man i remember hearing about Worthy and probably like 08 maybe yeah but i was i was and as were you like i was doing other things before i've always been into cars but it wasn't until later on that i like started learning more about like the worldwide culture of volkswagen yeah and where shows were and what iconic shows were where and yeah. all that stuff so yeah, it turned into it turned into let's go to Worthy. Then it turned into all right, who from England is going to drive? And then we yeah. had a bunch of friends that were going to drive, and we have a lot of TGC friends uh, like Marcel and Jules, guys that had been buying Governors Club gear for years, and yeah. guys that I'd been talking to on the internet for years. And so they do Worthy every year, and they go to England for Players Classic every year. So the England boys know the Germany boys. Oh yeah. So it quickly became this. It quickly became this like, all right, we'll take the week. It'll be a week in a few days at its at its shortest because we got to fly in maybe a day or two ahead of time, pack everything up, 12 hours to Germany. We break, they were breaking the drive up in like two stents. And then from Germany, like Cologne area on down to Worthesee. And then four or five days at Worthesee yeah. and then a two day stent home. So it'd be a week and a half maybe. And so the more we started to plan this trip out, the more I was like, and and you were working at Duncan at the yeah, time. Yeah, I was at Duncan's. At the That's time. right, because you were in. You it started that you were in transition of, of jobs. Yeah. And I remember thinking to myself, because you know I I was doing the laser gig in 2018 still, and I was like, man, it would if we're gonna do if we're gonna drive across Europe. Yeah. We need to go for like two or three weeks. Like we like it's just gonna be the worst to drive all the way across Europe and then hammer back to England and fly home. Yeah. I mean, we'll see a lot along the way, but. I kept thinking, man, it'd be amazing to like do yeah. the car stuff, but also do some history stuff, exactly. do some straight hang out, hanging out stuff with friends yep. and really kind of take our time. So I remember, I remember trying to like, I started, I started <laughs> like infusing those types of like yes. 
ideas into the conversation. I'm like, well, you know, if we got there and hung out for like it's, three yeah, or four exactly. days. Instead cause, of cause leaving had... right from England, we should stop in London for a day. And yeah. that's going to be a full day. And then we'll have to, yeah. And and, yeah. I, and you hadn't been overseas yet. So I was using exactly. that. I was using that as like the excuse. I was like, you've never been there before. So if we fly to England, we might as well soak up there for a couple of days, show you some sites, look at some castles. Yes. Get some fish and chips, go to the coast maybe. Yep. And then we'll drive to Germany. But then, you know, this was going to be my first time to Germany. So maybe we should stay there for a couple of days. And we'll drive on down to Worthesy. Yes. We'll do the full week of Worthesy because we've got to soak that up. So it may as well be two weeks now. We'll just call it two weeks. Yeah. See and what it, we can do with that. And it ended up being three. Almost. almost yeah. It was like three in a couple of days. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. It was almost a month. Almost a month. So as the trip's coming together and I'm on like... I don't know what you want to call it lodging duty. I'm trying to sort everything out and plan the whole trip out. Yeah. And I'm going through my Rolodex cards basically of friends that I knew across Europe. And I knew that Dean, our buddy in Wales, yep. was driving. Ben Walker was driving. Ben's up in the northeast part of England. And they knew the TGC Germany boys, like Marcel and Jules and uh, that whole crew, Paul and, yep. and Eugene, Eugen. And so it was weird contacting them. It's not like calling, and you know this now because you've met them. Right, exactly. But I knew this going into it that it's not like calling your buddies in like Florida being like, hey, we're coming through. Can we crash on the couch? Yeah. It's a total culture difference. Like if this was Japan, like their house is like a sacred place and like you're not usually allowed in the house. Mm -hmm. Like, and that's, and you, and you, you as a foreigner are supposed to respect that. Right. So, England's close enough to where we're like, hey, you know, yeah, I'm coming over. Crashed. Like, yeah. can I crash on the couch? And they're like, yeah. So when I started talking to Marcel, I remember pitching to Marcel, like, coming over there. And he's like, yes, you must. You must come. You must grow a mustache. You must yeah, come. Yeah, we like, did. Because he, well, because he, he, when when he first found me on Instagram, I had the fin tail and I had a mustache. And yeah. He had one. And yeah. I hadn't had it in a couple of years. And he's like, you must grow a mustache if you come over here. And yeah. so, yeah, so I did. And you had one. Yeah. And, uh, Mine's on the way back, by the way. Yeah. That's that's why yeah, okay. that's why I've got a full blown, like I don't say full blown beard, but way longer facial hair yeah. than I normally do. Yeah. I'm growing it all out evenly and then Yeah, that's what I'm, that's what I'm aiming for. You're going right back to the stash? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna bring it back. Yeah. It's weird without it. It's yeah, been so long with it. And I'm with just... the 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 like not quite five o'clock shadow, but a little bit more. Like, yeah. like looks it looks it looks more you than like the clean shaven yeah. look. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like, and I, I feel like it's the same for me too, because like I've I used to bick everything too. Right. And when usually when I have a mustache, I pick everything else. But I used to bick the whole face because I like that prohibition era, high and tight, slick yes. back, baby face. Like I like that look. But then after a while, like when I have like a five o'clock shadow or something, I'm like, I'm not a girl looking at me, but like even I think I look better with like a, <laughs> yeah. a little stubble on there. Yeah. But yeah, I think I'm in the process of bringing the mustache back for a little bit. Yeah. Dude, I'm single. I'm, I'm going to be 36 <laughs> years old. I don't, this is me like, Girls that change their hairstyles up, whether or not they dye it or they curl it or they cut it real short or they let it grow out. Like I'm, we're like that with facial hair. Yeah, exactly. And I'm like, it's been two years. The Worthy trip was the last time I had a mustache. I, yeah. I, I cut it off or shaved it off. I had to cut it off at that point. It was a long, that long. <laughs> yeah. Uh, shortly after that trip. So, but anyway, it's, it's coming back. So Marcel was like, yes. <laughs> yeah. So getting back on topic. Yeah. Marcel had said, you, know, you must grow a mustache. And so I was trying to work in. We want to come to Cologne as a first stop on our trip from England and meet up with all of you guys who are going to be driving down to Worthesy and drive down with you. He's like, yes, this would be great. So I'm trying to word it in, like, can we stay with you? And it was just you and I at the time, yeah. at this point. And he said, yes, I have a guest bedroom with with two beds or something like that. Yep. And, or I only have one, he said something along the lines of, I only have one bed extra bed. A guest bedroom with one bed yes yep. and i and i said well that, that's fine he goes well there are two of you and i with the language barrier and culture barrier i was trying to like relay to him that it was okay with us to like sleep yeah. on the floor yeah and it but it wasn't okay with him he right. goes well i do have a i do have a couch and he goes but not a bed and i said that's fine he goes no it's, it's not fine yeah and i was trying to figure out if it was not fine because he didn't want anyone on the couch or in his space, or if it was not fine because he didn't have the best 
hospitality yes. for us. Yeah. The best accommodation, because, you know? Yeah, it's because if, if he's putting you up in his house, he wants to have a bed. Right. For I know that him. now. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But at the time, I was trying to, uh, without pushing right. harder, because I didn't want to overstep my bounds, I, I wanted him to know that we're just like these greasy American kids. <laughs> I don't care if we sleep in our car in your driveway. Yeah. You know, like we're just like having a bathroom and a shower would be amazing. Exactly. But I don't care where I sleep. I'll sleep underneath the end table. I don't. I don't care. I'll sleep sitting up in the dining room chair. Yeah. And so once we got to that point where I realized he he was like, I only have room for one of you. I realized it was out of that he did not want there to be any subpar accommodation for us. Right. Then I felt like I could take the liberty to say we don't care. Yeah. Like we just want to come hang out with you. We want to see your local area. We want to see your cars. We want to see you. We see your workshop space. Mm -hmm. I want to eat at your favorite local spots. I yes. want you to take us around Cologne. I will sleep in your mud room, like, <laughs> yeah. I, like on the hardwood floor. Like, yeah. I don't care. Well, let's go. And so, but again, I don't want to be rude and overstep my bounds as like a typical American would be like, I'm, com I'm coming over, you know? Yeah. So, so we got that sorted. And then we sorted out lodging at Worthesy because they were getting a house and so we sorted all that out. So, you know, I was working every day messaging Dean because we, we we ended up flying into Manchester and met up with Cy Gray. Yeah. And we'll, we'll start, I'm just giving like an overall outline, but then we can start talking about all the details in order. But leading up to the trip, I'm working every day, talking to people, trying to get everything planned out and written down. So we weren't flying by the seat of our pants while we were over there, which wouldn't have been the end of the world, but it would have been nice to like just kind of have like, okay, this day we're staying with this person. Yeah. Then we're driving here. We're going to get a rental car here and then and then maybe sort out some Airbnbs. But my buddy Max, these are all, I'm describing these people for everyone else, but you obviously know these people now. Of but, course. But yeah. Max in Berlin had been buying TGC stuff for years. So I'm like, I've never seen Berlin, but I know Max in Berlin. I knew a few other people there too, but Max was always like, come, yes. come stay with me. So I, I mentioned it to Max. I said, hey, we're going to be in Germany but Berlin's way on the east side and we're going due south through Munich into Werthersee. So it was like, maybe after Werthersee, we can stay in Germany for a while. I'm a huge history nerd. So I always wanted to see Auschwitz. Auschwitz-Birkenau yep. was yep, me too. very somber, but I, I just, I wanted to stand on that soil. So if we went to East Germany, uh, Krakow, which is, you know, the closest little city to uh, Auschwitz and Birkenau isn't too far from Dresden yep. into Poland. And then obviously Berlin's north of Dresden. So I go, maybe we can utilize the last part of the trip there. And and so amidst this whole thing, Frank Gatto, our buddy Frank from Maine, yep. shout out to Frank, uh, said, hey, so are you guys going to Worthy? I'm thinking about going to Worthy. And I'm like, yeah, we're going. And he's like, <laughs> yeah, I think I'll tag along. You know, in not so many words. Of basically course, like, yeah, I'll yeah. come too. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, I just spent the last week trying to like, Ease like it. respectfully ease my yeah. way into my friends' homes in Germany and Poland and in Austria. Yeah. And and I was like, I I tried to describe to Frank like that that wasn't easy. I was like trying to not be disrespectful and so I wasn't sure if there was gonna be room for a third person. I yeah. barely squeezed you in. Yeah, <laughs> I know, I know it. So but again, and Frank Frank had a little bit more he was sitting on a little bit more like holiday money. Yes. We were kind of flying by the seat of our pants. Frank hadn't been over there before, but wanted like, had like a rainy day vacation fund where he was like, yeah, I want to rent yeah, whatever it costs. I want to rent like the nice BMW. Yeah, or whatever. Yeah. And I, I get that. I've been on trips like that too, but this was not one of them. Mm -hmm. We were going to be over there for like a month and which I won't get too far into. I was in Australia for like two weeks yeah. with four or five days here before we left for a month in Europe. Yeah, you were still on jet lag when we got back on our jet. <laughs> yeah, no, literally, yeah, like for the most part. Like yeah. I was still waking up at like one in the morning yeah. here, having gotten back from Australia when we flew to Iceland and then on to England. Yeah, yeah it was a, yeah, thir 13 countries in 2018. That's pretty impressive. 13 countries. More than most people do in their lifetime. <sighs> it's wild, man. Yeah, 2018 was my wonderless year. I mean, I suffer <laughs> from it every year, but that was the year where I was like, whatever yeah like whatever i'll figure it out in 2019 yeah like i'll just figure it out and it's a very liberating feeling yeah absolutely or way to live your life like that so so we're planning a trip out now frank wants to go and i'm like this is not in the, in our departure times coming up pretty quick i couldn't remember if we'd booked flights or not i think we had so what we did was we booked a one-way into england into manchester england cy gray who's for who 
the people that don't know is a professional automotive photographer who has shot like iconic features for yes. PVW magazine, PBMW magazine, Fast Car magazine. He shot my, he flew over and stayed with me here for like a week to shoot my E23 for Fast Car magazine. Yeah. In front of my dad's city service station here That's in town. That's right. Yeah. Which my dad has since sold. So it's really kind of cool. And I've got it plaqued on the wall in the living room. It's really cool to see like a car that I basically, it was a solo build for me. Like that car was one of my like, like personal projects. And it was really cool to see that car in an iconic magazine in front of my dad's garage. Yeah. Like it was really, really cool. Shot by an iconic photographer. Exactly. Yep. Yep. Exactly. So I, I had spent a couple of times over in England with Cy already. So we decided, well, we'll fly in. Cy's mom lives in England. We'll, we'll hang out in London for a day or two or however long. And so we had most of this stuff set up. The plan was to fly home out of Berlin, fly into England, do the drive to Worthesee, hang out in Germany and Poland for like another week after that, and then get to Berlin, stay with Max, fly home from Berlin. Yeah. The flight to... Now, we, we flew to Reykjavik, you know, to Iceland, yeah, yeah, which is way out of the way, but you get super cheap flights through Iceland there that way. So yeah. our flight to Manchester was like $220. Yeah. The flight from Berlin to Reykjavik, then to Boston was like $245. Yeah. So for like, <laughs> for like $500, we flew round, round trip yeah. out of Europe. So I think we had everything booked and Frank was like, I want to go. And, and so I was like, I don't know how we're going to make this work without me trying to weasel into the friends again to be like, hey, yes. so we got a third person Yeah, we got coming. another person, yeah. And, and it wasn't that I didn't want Frank coming. It was that I was just nervous to overstep, you know, my welcome right. with, with friends and in Europe who I hadn't met yet. You know, we'd been friends on the internet for a long time. I didn't want to seem like I was that entitled American to be like, we're coming, we're bringing more people this time. Yeah, you know? yeah. But it's cool. <laughs> so Frank luckily was like, whatever, man, I'll just get Airbnbs and yeah, we'll sort it out. Yeah. And I was kind of stressed out at this point. I'm trying to figure everything out. I had everything written down, trying to figure out where we're going to go. And I'm like, Frank, I... I can't really think about this right now. I, I've got to figure out, because I didn't have a credit card at the time. I said, I got to figure out if I can rent a car in Europe without a credit card, if I can rent out a debit card. And I know you could do it too, but I was just trying to do yeah. this trip. I was just trying to plan everything out. Of course. And at the time that Frank and I were talking on the phone, I was stressing about that. Because here you can rent you can rent cars. I didn't know what they're doing in, in Europe. I'd never rented a car. Every time I went to Europe, I just bummed around with friends in their yeah. cars. Yeah. So... I'm like, I'm really kind of stressing about this right now. And this is adding more stress to try to logistically add a third person to this whole trip. So Frank goes, well, figure out some other logistics and, and I'll just get I'll just get the rental car. And yep. we, we can sort it out, yeah. but I'll, I'll, I'll get, bring my credit I'll get card. Money. And you know why this story needs to be said yes. on this trip. Because <laughs> it's hilarious. And we'll get to that part of the story. Yep. But Frank basically said, leave the rental car to me. I'll bring my credit card. And yes, we're, we're good. We're good. So don't worry yep. about it. And I know Frank well enough to where I'm like, that's perfect. Yep. Perfect. We can sort it out later. We'll just Venmo you yep. <laughs> once we exactly. know what the total is. So now Frank's coming. But Frank is coming a week later, almost a week later than we were. Yeah. We flew into Manchester, met up with Cy. Cy lives just outside Manchester. He lives in... Br no. What's Bristol. the name of that town? No, um, no. It's on the tip of my tongue. We're going to sit here in silence until we figure it out because I know the name of the, it's on, I've been there numerous times. Hold on. Um. Mm. <laughs> oh, anyway, it'll come to me and I'm yeah. going to shout it out in the middle of a sentence. <laughs> I can hear, I can see Cy in my mind's eye smoking a cigarette with his British accent saying the name of his town because he hates living there. Yeah. I can see the sign. Because he bought a beautiful house there, but it's out in the middle of nowhere. And so he's like, I hate living out here in the middle yeah. of nowhere. It's on the tip of my tongue. All right. For the sake of people listening, of we're going to move on. Yeah. But Cy lives in this nice, I mean, to us, a beautiful area. Mm -hmm. but it's just out in the middle of nowhere. So, you know, with growing up in London and moving up to like yeah. the northern or middle part of the country was a big move. So when we flew in, Cy's got an amazing setup. He's got a huge garage underneath his house that he's turned into an automotive photography studio yep. with a, a remote controlled lazy Susan. In yes. There, like a turnstile yep. with full, full white, white walls, yep. radius, radius transitions. So everything yep. just, it's just all white yep. and he's got a remote wireless. He can control direction and speed. Yep. All the lighting in the world. Unreal. Just, yeah. Like what, I mean, we would obviously utilize that space 
for workshop yeah, and like car storage. It would not be white, that's for sure. Yeah, <laughs> and if we painted it white, it wouldn't last. It wouldn't be white for long. Yeah. So there's really cool. I mean, I'd been there before, but yeah, you got a chance to see that that part of of his of his house and shop and all that. So we'll catch back up to Frank. But Frank, we were going to be on the road to Germany to Cologne to meet up with the Germany guys to drive on to Worthesy. And then Frank was going to fly in and meet up with Ben Walker, Tom Caffrey. Yep. I think just them two, right? No, they had someone else with them too, um, right? Yeah, just who, the three of them. Who else was with them? I can't remember. I can't either. But they were, he yeah. was flying in later and, and Ben, Tom, and Frank and those guys were going to meet us at, at Marcel's in Cologne and then we were all going to drive through the night the rest of the 12 hours down onto Worthesy. Yeah. So we had like a week in England off the bat. So we flew into Manchester, met up with Cy. The next day we we, we we ventured around his area. You know, we went to that like little rock outcropping, yeah. like viewpoint area. Then we drove down to London, stayed with his mom. Yep. And yeah, walked around London, went to the White Tower, did all that stuff. That was your first time. I mean, so, this yeah. is your, so talk about that. This was your first time. I'm doing all the talking. Obviously, no, but, that's fine. <laughs> but um, this was your first trip to England. So first of all, we landed in Iceland. Yes. And... I've so I've connected there before, but I've never explored Iceland. Mm-hmm. All I know is that when I get off the plane and I'm hanging out in the Reykjavik airport, yep. and I'm watching Icelandic stewardesses walking yeah, around, I knew where this was going. I never, I, I don't want to leave. I know. Man. And so you get to experience that with me too. Yeah, so. of course it was. Yeah, and before we even landed in the middle of the night, because we took a, a, it was a red eye to yeah. get to to get to Reykjavik. Right. Look out the window in the middle of the night, and we can see. Aurora Borealis, the, mm-hmm. the Northern Lights, not great, but from an airplane. So you, but you could see them moving. Yeah, too. Exactly you know I mean? out the window. Yeah, I think I, you were asleep, and I like elbowed you. I'm yeah, like, you, you did. Have you to totally see. Did. I was on the window seat. I'm like, you have to see yeah. this. Yeah, that was mind blowing. Yeah, yeah. And then getting to England, so that this was your first time on yeah, foreign soil, of course. And then getting to England and getting out of the airport and seeing all the different cars and everything that you see like on the internet and stuff like that and you'd see it in person it's like yeah this is yeah all these cars are right hand drive wrong side of the road wrong (laughs) wrong side of the road all these rotaries that you enter going the wrong way yeah hilarious yeah yeah Yeah, so we did london which which i'd been to london a few times as well but it it never gets old to me because the history there is insane yeah so you see it as it is, as like a modern city, but when you go to the White Tower and you see, I mean, cause I'm a history nerd. So I've really dove into, you know, the significance of the River Thames and and it's it's importing and exporting of goods and people and all that, like into, into London throughout the years. Yes. The fact that there's still remaining like remnants of not just William the Conqueror from 1066 still there, but there's still like a part of the White Tower that's still standing that the Romans built right. even before that, which yeah. is just so, so mental. To be standing there looking at that stuff and you're like, oh, mankind built this? Yeah. Yeah, like the oldest stuff that we have that's man-built in America is like 300 years old. Exactly. You know, 400 exactly. years old at best, yep. which is so crazy. Hundreds and hundreds of years older than our entire country. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As far as uh, modern day modern. Yeah, civilization yeah, yeah. is right. concerned. Yeah. Industrial type. Yeah, like pretty buildings. wild. Yeah. So we did London. We walked like a solid 15 miles around London. Oh, yeah. Had to and, be. And yeah, then after that, we went back to size, back up to Manchester, back up to his town. And <clears throat> that's when we were just hanging out in the living room. And I've told this story, this isolated story a handful of times. Yeah. But we're hanging out. Uh, our buddy Johnny Smith came Johnny, up. Johnny, yeah. Johnny's from London, but he drove up. It was like three and a half hours to up to size. And... We're just hanging out and we're talking about Eastern Bloc cars. And as you know, and as yeah. most everybody else knows. Since we're going to Germany, we were talking about all the... In Poland. Yeah, we're going to be going Poland. to Poland. So I'm yep. like, yeah, there's going to be Ladas and, and Zazas and yep. Trabants. And yep. we're going to see all this stuff. And maybe even Volgas. You know, God willing, we see a Volga. <laughs> one of my favorite cars. <laughs> yeah. And so we're just kind of chit-chatting about that stuff. And it might have been you or maybe Johnny had said like, you know, can you find like proper Soviet cars here in england and i'm like sometimes you can't because yeah. you can drive there from here so right. those cars have like migrated you know their way obviously into into western europe so i pulled out my laptop and got on car and classic uk which yes. is basically craigslist of yes, sir. the uk and i started poking around to just see what i could find for ladas just as like an example to show john right 
Sure enough, I find, and I won't go into all the painstaking details about the Lada, but ultimately found a red one, a pre-export. So it was a true Soviet, yeah. a Soviet USSR Zhiguli 2101, like yeah. before they started calling them Ladas yeah. and exporting them. And had this one had all the Russian instrumentation, yeah. like proper Soviet car. Krishnikov in the trunk. Yeah, yeah seriously. <laughs> um, yep. And a handle of vodka under the seat. Yep. <laughs> Two hours from size. And I called the guy. I sat there. I mean, you remember. You were there. Yeah. I sat there on the couch forever going, am I going to, am, am I actually going to call this guy? Because yeah. Johnny was like, Johnny had a little. Um, GTA 6. Yeah, GTA 86. I was thinking of the proper word for him. Oh, not, yeah, yeah. Not BRZ. Yeah, yeah. G, G, GTA 86. But I was like, all right, so hap, say I call this guy and say he has the car yeah. and say after all of this, I'm actually interested in going to look at it and possibly spending money on it. Yeah. Our third day here on a month long trip across europe yes uh and we're leaving this country tomorrow yeah the day after tomorrow <laughs> the day after point, tomorrow yeah um i said would you be willing to drive out there he goes, yeah that's fine and i'm like all right so then i kept stressing about spending the money blah 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 and you know and you guys were like well just call he might not even have the car anymore you're yeah. stressing out before you even call the guy yeah so i called him straight up russian man i hardly understand yep. what he was saying on the phone mm. like very very <laughs> sharp very broken up english and I'm like, of course, of course, this is a Russian dude selling a Soviet. <laughs> it had to be. Yeah, Soviet Union car. Yeah. Uh, so I'm like, you around tomorrow? He's like, yep. I'm like, okay, here we go. We're coming down. So we drove out there. It was like a two hour drive. We went out there, and the whole time I'm thinking, what am I doing? <laughs> like, what? We're, we haven't even left for Austria yeah. yet. Yep. And so we go, and we go look at it, and it's in a storage, little storage unit, and he brings a battery with him. And I'm yeah. like, this thing is not running a long time. Yep. And he goes and puts a battery in it and he comes back, goes to his van, gets a can of fuel, goes back in and you can hear the fuel like hitting the bottom of the gas tank yeah. when he's like filling it up. And I'm like, this car is not running forever. Yeah. And I didn't say anything at this point either, but I was like, that's probably not a good sign. Oh, I'm thinking I don't it know too. if this car is going to even start. Me too. I'm like, oh no. Yeah. I mean, I'd never been, I'd seen them before, but I'd never been around them. To right. Like no. I'd always heard that they were pretty utilitarian and robust, but so he gets in it. And I've got video footage of this because I've got video footage of your reaction. My face says so it all. He gets in it and I see the brake lights come on and it cranks over once. Just the sound of the starter. And fires and, up. Yep. And purring. Like and just, kitten. Like yep. Perfect. And I, I panned over to you and you were like, <laughs> and I was like that. I, I, at that moment, I knew like I'm buying this yeah. car. Yep. So yeah, again, without going too far into detail, because that'll be a whole separate, I'll do another episode yeah. about the Lada yeah, basically. Exactly, yeah, I bought the car. I bought the car after, you know, he's going around the car. I couldn't get the passenger side rear door to shut. You remember that? Yeah, yeah. I kept, you know, I'd open a door and I'd look inside, look at the headliner and the thing was in immaculate shape and I'd go to shut it and it wouldn't shut all the way. And it was clear that you had to put some force into shutting these doors. So yeah. the second or third time I went to shut the door, I'd like really put some force on it. And each time he would come over and he would shut it for me a little bit harder. Yeah. Then finally he came over and he's like, it's Russian. And he'd like slam, slam it shut. Slam it, yeah. And, and, He's like, it's the Russian, you fix car with hammer. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, you want nothing? He goes, you fix car with hammer. I'm like, oh my gosh, this yeah. is, all, it's all true. Yeah. And what else did he say? Oh, I was just, he overheard me say to you, I'm like, look at how awesome this thing is, man. It's Russian, it doesn't even have backup lights on it. It doesn't have reverse lights, just yeah. taillights on. He goes, a lot of do not go backwards, just forwards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. A lot of do not go backwards. It was so perfect. The whole, the whole, the whole experience. Scenario. Dude, the whole experience of that guy and buying that car was out of a movie. Yeah, absolutely. And, including and, the ending. And that's, yeah. Which I'm sure I'll, you'll get to. I'll glaze over that. <laughs> but like, and I do, I want to save all the details for its own episode. Yeah. But this whole time, I've left the car idling the whole time where they're walking because I'm keeping an eye on the temp gauge every now and yep, then. Yeah, exactly. I found out which one the temp gauge was just because it had moved a little bit, but it said it, it said bar in Russian. Yeah. It's like their weird font. And I'm like, I think that's temp. Yeah. But not, everything's in Russian, so I don't know. But so I kept it running to make sure it wasn't, you know, once it built pressure, it wasn't leaking anywhere and it wasn't overheating and, and it wasn't. And I mean, it's a, it's a mechanical fan with like an old yeah. half radiator, no <laughs> reservoir, it's a fill cap. Yeah. And um, so it's, it's running. So it's been running for like 30 minutes while yep. we're walking around it and stuff. So I'm like, we worked out a price. He was obviously a Russian when it came to the price. Yeah. That w I, it I was, was the price. I was afraid to barter too much because I was afraid <laughs> I was going to get shanked. <laughs> And um, or choked. He, yeah, he yeah. just like he just killed me with his bare hands. Of course, or a hammer or something. Yeah, yeah. So we did the deal, and I PayPal'd him 
my friends and family PayPal them. Now I didn't spend five hundred dollars on this car. I spent yeah. a little bit of money on this car. It was exceptional. It was the one I wanted. It was a pre-export car. The pre-export cars are worth money even in England. Yep. It had come over from Lithuania. He had driven it from Lithuania yeah. himself. Yeah. He was starting to bring these cars over and trying to sell them. So he was like really kind of firm on the price. I'd wanted one forever. So I pulled the trigger, PayPal them friends and family. The whole time I'm like, is this a good idea? <laughs> like I should have, looking back on it, I should have added the 2.9% transaction fee and paid through goods and services. Yeah. I didn't. At the time, I was like, I don't even want to afford the extra like hundred or however much more dollars it was for the transaction fee. I was yeah. like, I shouldn't be doing this at all. So I remember right before I hit send, I remember thinking, looking at the friends and family thing, being like, this is living, click. You know, <laughs> this, is like, this, is, this is life. <laughs> like if this backfires, this is just, this is me learning my lesson. That's my new motto. So I just, I just sent it. And he was keeping the car. He was keeping the keys to the car because after we left, our friend Dean, who we drove to, where is he with? His friend Simon, who was in the same unit as him, had a little ramp truck. Yeah. And he was going to drive from basically, uh, what's the name of his town? Right outside Cardiff, Wales, basically. So yeah. basically bottom left corner of the UK was going to drive up. It was going to be like three hours to get the car and bring it back to their unit and look after it until I had shipping sorted out to america yeah so through that day that whole next day the car was going to stay with him with the keys of the car he had been paid in full and he gave me this little laminated <laughs> this little laminated piece of paper that had lithuanian writing on it and i could tell it was a registration just yeah. because i couldn't understand any of the words but it was it was like a a sheet of like words and then dot 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 and then numbers and i'm like okay well, this is like, like gvw yeah. this is yeah, <laughs> this is like weight yeah. or whatever so so i'm like what's this and he hands this this is yours and i'm like no bill of sale no i i filled out a bill i made you a bill, did, out a bill yeah. of sale but that's not like the way they do it in england you right. need like a v4 form and yeah this didn't have it because it had never even been registered or mot'd in england that's it right. come over from with still the lithuania plates on yeah. it which i still have which is awesome yeah i want to make sure i kept those <laughs> so anyway long story short we ended up leaving you took a photo of me shaking his hand I did. Which I is, have a photo of you signing I, the bill, bill of sale, sale on the hood of another Lada. The one that he had originally listed for sale yep. that I called about, but it was yellow. And I was like, I don't want a yellow Lada. <laughs> and it was a it was an export Lada. It was a newer one. It was like a 76. Yeah. yeah. So 75 was when they first started shipping them outside of Russia. Right. And they had English English um, instrumentation and badges. And that's when they went from Zhiguli to Lada, to Lada. because the Zhiguli translation didn't translate to words that they wanted it translating into or whatever. Right. So they just started Lada. Yeah. And so I wanted a true Zhiguli with the Russian badge on the back and all that. So so he, when I called about that car, and this is what I'll go over in another episode, he'd already sold the car. But then we show up and the car's in the driveway and I'm like, oh, this isn't a good sign. Yeah. Although I, I take that back. It was a good sign because he said it was not for sale. Yes. That, that, that was yes, a good sign. Exactly. He could have sold it to me and screwed somebody else. So when I paid for the car, left the keys and the car and just took this little, like whatever, what, this sounds good, this little <laughs> piece of paper, my solace was the fact that the car that he had already sold that he wasn't trying to sell to me hadn't been picked up yet. Like yeah. he had sold it and wasn't for sale. So I was like, all right, that's, yeah. that's putting a little bit, somewhat honest, a little bit more fuel in the tank for me. So, uh, so yeah, we signed the bill of sale. We took off. Now I, I'm, I leave empty-handed. I just yeah. PayPal this dude a bunch of money. Now I leave and I'm like, ah, I don't have anything. I got this little piece of paper to show for it. But hey, let's go to Germany. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. let's go to Germany like more broke than I came here. <laughs> so we the next day, we went back down to Wales because we went from size to Dean's. We met like halfway. We, we got in with Dean. We went down to Wales. Yep. Saw a couple of castles. Um, Abercrombie. Yes. Yeah. That's the, I can't believe I, I remembered that, but not size town. I know. I st I've still been trying to remember size town and i can't oh man yeah abracanevi is abracan abracanevi or kenny abracanevi i think anyway regardless we went down there and we got some amazing chinese food yes we met up with right we met up with rory hamilton good buddy of mine works on works on um uh rolls royce aircraft engines yeah which is really cool and has a really cool Mercedes. Really, just an awesome dude through and through. But we had dinner there. The next morning, we were booking it to to Germany. We went to si uh, we went to Dean's unit and size unit. Looked at some of Dean's cars. Dean has an awesome lineup of cars, even more awesome lineup of cars now. But yeah, I had a really cool lineup back then too. So we were gonna take his S one two four 
estate on the three spoke three piece Brabus's. Yeah. Beautiful car. But he had had a repair on one of the wheels, one or two of the wheels that kept leaking. That's right. Kept getting flats on one of the wheels. And so the next morning he's like, maybe I'll go get it welded up. And I'm like, we're trying to leave. Like we can't, we don't have time for that. (laughs) It's a 12 hour drive to Cologne and we're in Wales. So we're like four hours to Dover to the, to the Euro tunnel. Yeah. So he's got an E32. We were just talking about those. That's right. We are. Yeah. Beautiful E32. That was lowered on wheels and stuff. And, uh, so for those who don't know, seven uh, the technically second generation seven series BMW. Yeah. If you look as far as flagships go, is the E3 2500 or Bavaria here in the states, mm-hmm. then the E23, then E32. But so I'm like, well, what about the E32? Is that sorted out? And he's like, yeah, it should be. I don't know. I didn't really have enough time. I went over the S124 fluids yeah, yeah. and make sure brakes are good. And I'm like, I don't know what do you think. He's, I think it'll be fine. I'm yeah. like, Let's go. So yep. we just it would be the equivalent <laughs> of like it'd be the equivalent of jumping in a 1988 BMW and driving to Orlando, Florida <laughs> and back by just checking the oil. Yeah. Like it's got coolant, it's got oil. All four wheels all there. <laughs> got good tread. Let's go. Yep. Yeah. So that's what we did. We packed everything up and we headed for the Euro Tunnel. And we had like a midday Euro Tunnel appointment. So we were getting on at like noonish or something like that. Yeah. And we had we were the first to the next train. So we were first in line waiting for the for the boarding. And I remember sitting there and I got a Dean got a text from Simon. Yeah. And it was a photo of his ramp truck with a lot on it. Yes. And I remember being like, We're on vacation. <laughs> Let's go. You know, I like, can like, breathe now. Dude, because I was low key stressing the whole time. That night, that morning, the drive to Dover. I'm like, uh I, I kept asking Dean, like, if you heard anything from Simon, do you know yeah. if he's on the road? And he's like, No, he hasn't said anything yet. And without being yeah like rude I'm like, yeah can you can you ask him he's like oh, yeah. it's like a three-hour drive and he hasn't told you he's on the way yeah so yeah we're just sitting there and dean just goes oh simon texted me and i'm like oh what's the news and yeah. he like shows me his phone and it's a couple photos of the lot of on the truck and i was like thank goodness <sighs> relief washed over me in a wave the kgb yeah. didn't take my money yeah seriously <laughs> the kgb vape for no one <laughs> so we yeah so that then holiday started for me yeah i mean i was i was few grand like <laughs> broker but i was like let's do this i feel good the car's in good hands yeah and so we got on the euro tunnel that was an experience i'd always wanted to do that even after four years of being in england i'd always wanted to go into france yeah under the english channel i still think about that all the time how it actually works yeah Crazy. so cool so we got in the but think of the history think of i mean william the conqueror himself like traversing the english channel to invade england the romans did it before him yeah and that's what i was the whole time we're we're on the euro tunnel going underneath the english channel i'm thinking about the significance of the english channel yeah i'm like this is so nuts to be over here so we drive we get to france and we drive off and we drive up and all of a sudden everything's in french and i'm like we're in france yeah bienvenue yeah here we go so yes then we drove through france got into belgium immediately so i remember just over the border we stopped in belgium at like a rest stop and i got a chocolate covered belgian waffle absolutely <laughs> took a photo of it yeah <laughs> we're in belgium yep you have to pass the pass to the netherlands and then oh while we were still in belgium we met up with with um ivan that's right yeah let me see if i get the photo here somewhere I get the photo yeah. I, won't, I won't dig for it right now but but yeah we we, we met up with him and he had ordered a key ring like a governor's club key ring. Yeah. And he was like, think you could just bring it with you? I, he goes, I live off of the highway you're going to be driving through Belgium. On. Yeah. Like, well, I'll just meet you. And I was like, yeah, that'd be amazing. So we stopped and met up with him and I gave him the key ring. He'd already paid for it on the web store, but I gave him the key. He, we've got a photo together with yeah, the key yeah. ring. And that was a cool interaction. He's got one of the coolest Mark Threes. Seriously. That Mark Three Jetta is yep. so, so cool. So cool. Yeah. And so that was cool to see him. Like, we're surrounded. We're, we're in Belgium. You know what I mean? Like, and I'm thinking about you know, 19, well, the late thirties, early forties, when it was just being bombarded and it was in Nazi occupation. And, yeah. And so it's just really kind of a, a wave of emotions and history that like, it's constantly in my head when I'm over there. So we're driving through Belgium, go through the Netherlands. Then we get into Cologne that night. Cause it was like a 12 hour drive. Yeah. Met up with Marcel and went into Cologne, had pizza yeah. and looked at a German Mark One Jetta Coop sitting across the street from <laughs> right. from the pizza place, and I couldn't believe it. Just yeah. a bone stock, never left, you know, never left Deutschland. Yeah, and so that was that was really cool. Um, then we walked around and saw the cathedral. That's right. Yeah, the Lovelock Bridge. Yeah. What yeah. what else was a highlight for you when we got there? Other um, other than 
other than doing like 145 was, miles an that's hour. That's exactly what I was going to go to. Yeah. Tell it. Yeah. It's amazing. We get in Marcel's um, five series. Um, yeah. Touring. Newer five, brand new five series touring on, you know, lowered on wheels, his daily driver. But we get in it and it's the middle of the night. Five deep. Yeah. Five deep. Yeah. It was Marcel's girlfriend at the time. The three of us. Yeah. Fra- Frank had met up. Frank had met up with us at this. Wait, did he? Yeah. No. No, he didn't. No, they weren't we, there yet. They showed up the next morning. Oh, Dean. Dean, yeah, yeah Dean, Dean was with us. Yeah, because <laughs> we went with Dean. Um, yes, that's right. Yeah, so in the middle of the night, we wanted to go out and get late pizza, and we get on the highway, which is the Autobahn, Autobahn, because we're in Germany at this point, and we're just cruising, talking, and at one point, I remember when I realized that... Cabin, was, cabin noise was different. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it wasn't loud. It wasn't like, oh my God, this is crazy, but it's like... I think we're going really fast. I think we're, I think, yeah, we go in the speed limit and you look up at the speedometer and it's at like 300 and you're like, what is that in miles per hour? <laughs> it's it like was 150 it, or something. I was on the passenger side rear seat on that window. Yeah. And I was just kind of looking at my phone. It was dark. We weren't quite in Cologne yet. So there wasn't too much to look at. And I remember just the ambiance, like cabin noise of like the ground yeah. outside. And it's a new car, so it's real quiet. And I remember thinking like, I feel like we're going really fast. Yeah, I was I was sitting in the middle seat in the back and it kind of has a hump. So I felt like I was kind of high up yeah. in the car and I could see the white stripes on <laughs> in the road. Yeah. And they were just a solid white stripe. I've got a video. I took a video of it. Yeah. I, I peeked up over Marcel's shoulder and looked at the speedometer and I was like, oh, three hundred. Like, and I like <laughs> zoomed in on it. I'm like, that's like 150 miles an hour. And he's and like one wheel, just one slu- hand on the wheel, back, yep. just having a conversation, pointing stuff out. But that's a that car was that car was designed to drive that absolutely. That speed. Absolutely. When you're on those strips, you know the, the strips, the sections of highway that are no speed limit in Germany. Yeah. They, you need to drive that fast. And there's nothing in there's nothing there. You're right. just it's right. straight flat. Not a lot of other cars. Yeah, yeah. And so we, yeah, we drove into Cologne. I remember that being um, that was our first because we we drove in with Dean in the E32, so we weren't like I mean we were doing hundred plus at yeah. plenty of points where we weren't in Germany for too far out of the Netherlands because Cologne's right there, Dusseldorf right. and Cologne's right yeah. there. So we spent the night out walking around Cologne, seeing the cathedral was just unbelievable. Yeah, I mean that it that really was is. that cathedral was just so breathtaking, and the next day. We went to Marcel's unit. We saw his W108, that beautiful V8 W108. Yes. That's one of my favorite 108s in the world. And he, he'll he he'll say it. He said it to me plenty of times that the Fintail, my yeah. 1960 Fintail was like a big inspiration for bagging his 108. That's and so awesome. That's when we started. The first message he ever sent me on Instagram was was air suspension technical questions because he was bagging his 108. Yeah. And, and so here it is, six six years later because that was 2012 six years later i'm like staying at his house i'm looking at his 108 looking at the 108 so cool man so cool so he backed that car out and it was just so cool to finally see that car and he's driving that 12 hours to velden in austria as and so so that midday or that night yeah that afternoon jules showed up in his in his c1 audi 100 coupe yes that he had just like out of three separate motors, made one good motor, yep. had just put it in the car, put oil in it, got it running, and drove it to Marcel's saying, ciao, we're off to Austria. No break-in in- miles. Insane. Like just, yep. I built this motor uh, with parts that really shouldn't be on this, or in this motor. This but piston is shinier than this piston. I'm going to use this one. Yep. Yep. Throw it all together. And and we're- and Literally, we're, test test drive was going to Cologne. To Marcel's and then on to, on yep. to where the Z. And then on the way home, we kind of went the long way and we came up through Stuttgart. We'll cover that on the way home. Yeah. But yeah. A, and he made this, he built the split wheels that were on the car too. Yeah. So they were like widened steelies that were now three piece wheels. And, <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. Um, well, and I, he wasn't, he wasn't afraid. Like, no. I was trying, I was trying to like, figure out how to say this yeah, the best yeah, yeah. way he wasn't afraid to drive this anywhere and at one point i hopped in the passenger seat and i was like I'm, yeah i'm gonna ride, ride with you for i'm gonna ride bit. with jules yeah yeah this car is amazing and yeah i think it was one point we get into this super long tunnel and he was like messing with some buttons i'm like oh what's he doing 
and he completely airs out on the highway. Yeah, yeah, I was in a tunnel. I've got the, <laughs> I'm like, oh. what car was I in? I was in Dean Z32 at the time, yeah. which was right-hand drive. That's right. And we're in the right lane. So I am, I'm in, you know, I'm on that side that you guys are pulling up on. And he was already driving pretty low. So I like pulled out my camera to do, yeah. And that's probably when he like, was like, all right, yeah. we're dumping it out. Cause I was like <laughs> filming out the window and at 80 plus miles an hour, that had to be lays the thing completely out in this tunnel. Yep. And the whole length, I mean, at the time he finally lifted it up, there was like smoking parts coming off the car. Oh, absolutely. Like smoking parts. And that's one of my favorite clips. Yeah. And it's, it's such a cool clip because the, the way the tunnel was lit up with the car and the lights, you know, reflecting off the paint going over the car yeah. with the fire and smoke and sparks, sparks flying up the back. Everywhere. Yeah, that was, so that was our introduction to Jules. I mean, I, we had talked much. on the internet a bunch, you know, and he had some Governor's Club stuff too, but. Yeah. Because it was really cool to finally meet like the TGC Germany boys. Like yeah. these were like. These were dudes from Germany that had supported the Governor's Club for like six years. That's crazy. And it was really kind of crazy for me to finally be there and meet these guys in person. And we were, we'll get to this point too, but we were we were planning a Governor's Club Germany meet in Cologne afterwards. Yeah, that's right, yeah. So, yeah, so we hit the road. Ben, without going into the details about Ben's endeavor oh, to get yeah. down. Frank flies in, Ben, Tom, uh, and Frank get in Ben's E28, which was on its on its on its uh first ever drive to austria yeah in his 80s five series and they hit the road and without going too deep into this whole story because i'm sure i'll have been on the podcast at some point we'll talk about this yeah absolutely but they started getting flats in all of his wheels their three-piece wheels i think he was on the comp motors at the time yeah that's right and uh realized that they were leaking from the bolts like yeah. the bolts were like coming apart on torquing and then splitting sealant or something so they had to disassemble and rebuild all four wheels three the side piece of the wheels road. on the side of the highway and seal them up overnight they got like a hotel yeah got tires put back on them and then made it then drove to germany yeah on and like ba barely any sleep <laughs> so they show up in late afternoon of the evening we're leaving because they're, they're driving through the night 12 hours to austria to, to arrive the next morning so they show up we had just eaten all the yeah. Jules and all the guys came over. Eugen, Paul, all those guys came over, and we we uh, had dinner. I can't remember what we got, but anyway, anyway, we ate it ourselves. And then they showed up, We're like, "Hey, what's going on, guys? Well, let's load the cars. Yeah, let's go." They pretty just, much. They just driven in from England, and we're like, "Let's go." So they did a straight haul. So yeah, so we we got down to Munich. It was about mm, six or seven hours, if I remember correctly, down to Munich. Maybe a little bit longer than that. And we were meeting up with Phil Giebler That's and right. Ollie Grime. Uh, so to re to recount their cars, Phil Giebler has the black bagged Volvo Amazon on splits. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful car. Gaudi's, I think. No, that was Keith Ross in Phoenix. Oh, oh, oh yeah. yeah. I always get the two. Yeah, he had on I those big those Lorenzers or whatever yeah, they were, the yeah. big five spoke wheels. That's right. They're yeah. on different wheels now, but uh, yeah. And then Ollie has the the famous black wide body 2002 on the center lock pbs wheels yeah beautiful car and these guys were governor's club guys too which yeah. blew my mind i'm like <laughs> i'm seeing these cars and they're both trailering these guys these cars are like creme de la creme and looking at these cars and they've got governor's club stickers on them i'm like this is yeah. so crazy <laughs> like i'm looking at some of the best cars in the euro scene in germany in the same parking lot, Jules Audi 100, Marcel's Bag 108, yeah. Phil's Volvo, and Always 2002, and, and everybody else's cars that were with us. And they've all got Governor's Club stickers on them. I'm like, this? It's insane. This is nuts. Yeah. And so we met up in Munich. It was We were at a McDonald's off the interstate, and it was pitch dark out. Now, I knew that Munich was in South Germany, right, basically at the border of the Alps. But it's pitch dark out. It's like four in the morning. So we meet up with them out in the parking lot. We're saying hi. We're introducing all of us and whatever. Then we go inside and we sit down and we have like breakfast sandwiches and coffee. We sit down and hang out for a little bit to just kind of recoup. Then we, st I'll never forget this. I walked out the front door of McDonald's, which had previously been pitch dark. Yep. Right. Nothing beyond the parking lot. It's darkness. And I walk out that door and now the morning light, like dawn is yep. approaching. And I, look, I step outside and all across the horizon is the Alps. Yeah. And I, and it just it took my breath Absolutely. away. And we weren't even into the Alps, but you could, it was almost like approaching the Rockies, you know, you can, but the the aggressive peaks and 
I just stood there like breathtaking. Yeah, I for think a few we all minutes. did. Absolutely. I couldn't believe it because we walked in, it was dark. We came out yeah. and it was just like, whoa, where <laughs> are we? So I took a lot of rolling footage at that point. And I wish, I'm telling you, man, I really, really wish I had gotten into like starting a YouTube channel for that trip. Yes. The content would have been unbelievable. Oh, yeah. I'm happy that I, I still filmed and documented it all for like Instagram and just the fact that we were there. So, but I say Instagram as far as there's like story highlights of this trip. Yeah. Uh, but man, I would have loved to have had like a DSLR and it wasn't until that fall 2018 that I finally bought one and started a YouTube channel. Cause I think, um, Ocean City 2018 was the first like, That's like right. vlog basically yeah. on the YouTube channel. But I started filming a ton with the phone after we left that rest stop driving, getting closer to the Alps, you know, coming into Austria, yeah. driving through the Alps was just unbelievable. I still find myself in my phone in the camera roll looking at all those videos and photos. Doesn't even look real. Didn't no. look real in person I know. either. And so we drove through the Alps all exchanging areas of where we're driving so we can get all the best photos yeah, and stuff. Photos of each other, yeah. And uh, yeah, so we, we got down into Austria, finished the drive up, and man, just in the Austrian countryside. And when we got down into Velden, and dude, and we stopped, we stopped at the uh, Mischkulnik. Is that how you pronounce Mischkulnik, it? Mischkulnik, yeah. Mischkulnik, the famous, what used to be a Shell gas station yeah. in, in at Worthesee. Like that famous Shell that's always, you see everyone's- it in the videos. Door to door, yeah. shoehorned into this parking lot at night. It's like the it's like the quintessential like Worthesy spot, yeah. basically pre meat spot. And we pull into that parking lot as our first stop to to actually get fuel. And I remember stepping out of the car and like looking at you and looking at everyone else, and I'm like, yeah. we're we're at like in the, and this was the week before the show, so I'm like, in the next few days, this spot is yep. gonna be unbelievable. Yep. And so that was the coolest rolling into that gas station. You know, from 2008, the first time I started watching War of the Z videos. Yeah, exactly. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that was that was really, really cool to, to get there. And then now it's like, we're here for five days, five yeah. or six days, we yeah. stayed there. So we got to the house. The house that they rented was on Lake Worthesy. Directly on. Yeah, you lake walk Worthesy. out the house yep. and it's like a 50 foot it's a dock grass right bank to yep. a dock right on the lake. It's so crazy. Yes, yeah, so that was amazing. And they offered breakfast every morning. Like oh, she man. had, that was my, okay. Brunchen. Man. So I'm telling you, there's nothing, anyone listening that's stuck in your day to day job, uh, like just dying to get out on the road and travel. And obviously, we're living in a weird time right now with the pandemic yeah. and stuff. Hopefully, you know, say what you will about vaccines and all that stuff, but hopefully in the next year, we've got it somewhat sorted out. Vaccine or no vaccine, whatever. Yep. Hopefully in the next year, we're kind of back traveling again. But I'm telling you right now, I've never felt more free and more like internally happy than when I woke up in the morning. And you know, when you're getting your bearings straight, when you first wake up, you know, it takes you that like sometimes a split second, sometimes a couple seconds as you're waking up to remember like where you are, where you're at, yeah. you know, where you're at, even when you're on holiday too. Cause you know, you could be in Florida at Disney world and you wake up in the morning and once your bearings come back to you, you're like, Oh yeah, I'm on holiday. Yeah. So, you know, I remember waking up and this is like day two, day three, day four, however many days, but I remember waking up and re realizing I'm in South Austria. I just bought one of my dream cars <laughs> and I'm with my buddies. Yeah. And I get up, I look out the window, there's Lake Worthesee, there's the mountains. And I walk from that house across the stone driveway around everybody's cars, all my favorite cars from around Europe yep. into the next building where she had all this handmade breakfast with coffee on, pouring a cup of coffee, getting some bread and cheeses and meats and going out on like the patio with the sun out and sitting down around my buddies who are having conversations in German and our buddies, you know, our British friends with their accents. And I remember sitting there and just sipping on a coffee, looking out over Lake Worthesee, yeah, going, I have no agenda today. And it's too much to take in. It is. I, I, that's what I mean. I remember being overwhelmed. Yeah. Like I'm sitting there trying to just take in the view of the lake and the mountains. So that's all I have to focus on because yeah. everything else is overwhelming. <laughs> yep. And I'm just sipping on that coffee and I'm like, this this singular moment is like pure bliss. Yeah. Like we're gonna we're gonna wash the cars, we're gonna get in those cars, we're gonna cruise down into town, and we're gonna see more of my favorite cars from all over the world. Yeah, and we're gonna walk around, and it it, it rained the day we left. That's like right. it drizzled the day we left. Yeah, that's it right. was beautiful weather every day we were there. Yeah, and man, I just that's that's 
That's Wonderlust. That, that's it, in my opinion. Absolutely, that sums it up. You, you, you've already gone through the stressful stage of balancing all the finances, being like, you know, the pros and cons. Like, should I spend this money? Should I not spend this money? Me being self-employed, I can't budget my money like that. I'm not on a fixed income. So it's like, ugh, can I grind hard enough when I get home to make up for this? To backtrack a little bit, you were in transition of jobs. Yeah. And you went to, for your job interview at Ace. That's right. And you were like, yeah, it, it was it was coming up in like a couple months, but you were like, hey, by the way, I might be gone for the month of May yep. to go to work. Exactly. And, and he was actually like, yeah, okay. Yeah. I've always wanted to go myself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so luckily you had just started a new job. They were okay with you doing this, but. Yeah, it worked out really well for that. Yeah, it really did. And, and I remember just every day being, dude, I just, I chase that feeling so hard now. Yeah. I chase it so hard. And I just remember being so happy and just cruising, being able to, and you did too, but being able to drive Jules's car around oh where the God. Z, yeah. being able to drive Marcel's car. I literally still talk about that all the time. So cool, man. Yeah. And I'm glad we, we've all got footage of it. Cause when I first, when yeah. the footage you have of me driving Jules's car, he actually says in the video, like you're the first person to ever drive my car. <laughs> yeah. Not even my girlfriend drives yeah. this car. He goes, oh, ex-girlfriend. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, so that just that initial introduction to Worthy was was just overwhelming and amazing. And the food was incredible. Uh just walking around at night, walking around the casino, like with all the cars are parked out yep. front. Yeah, that was incredible. Getting a chance to meet the Keen boys, you know, and see the Ferrari. They had just finished that Ferrari. I know. So that was kind of like blowing up the internet at the time. And to yep. see that in person was really cool. What are what are the highlights for you at Worthy itself? Um <clears throat> that stand out. Well, uh, you just mentioned the Ferrari. Um, I think we were Christians. Yeah, RWB. When we, yeah, when we were filming, um, yeah, Christians RWB Porsche with the Falcon. Tilt and boys. then we just totally randomly on the highway met up with the Keen boys and the Ferrari. Yep, and that became the film. That's how they. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we were on the highway shooting for the Falcon Tilt. Where that was film, Falcon Tilt. Yep, which. I have to plug this. Yeah, of course. Which I ultimately wrote the intro soundtrack movie or, or the intro soundtrack for the movie. Yes. Uh, with the Rising Sea, which was just uh, an honor. Yeah. For sure, an honor. But yeah, we're we're filming Christian's RWB. My favorite RWB, like for the, for the most part, I mean, I'm not a huge Porsche guy. I am, but like, I don't have any like, I don't know, political stance on the <laughs> RWB stuff. I really don't care. Yeah, They're yeah. cool looking cars. They really are. But I like a stock looking 964 just as much. Of course, yeah. But Christian's was the coolest one in my opinion. Yes. Because I'm all about aesthetics and like retro aesthetics. Yes. So his was the Macintosh Apple computer livery, livery. from like the 80s. Yeah. With the Mac Apple logo with yeah. the yellows, blues, and whites. The, and The rainbow, yeah. The whole car was white with that like aesthetic 80s Apple Macintosh yeah. uh, livery. And that was just the coolest thing in the world. So that... And it was a built motor. It was a really hot car. Big, massive turbo with the rear apron cut out to fit the turbo. So cool. Yeah, just, it, it was the whole the whole package. And and plot twist, or fun fact, I should say, I'm driving Marcel's car in the movie. Yeah, that's right. When, we're, when we like let Christian out in the traffic and we follow him and stuff. So yeah. I thought that was kind of cool. Marcel's like, you know, you drive. And I'm yeah. Like, really? He's like, yeah. I'm like, okay. So, yeah. So being with the Keen boys, Christian's Porsche, that was really cool. What else did we do? We went up to the, can't remember the name of that tower, that famous Q tower. Kugel. The Q Kugel? Kugel? I think that's what it was called. Yeah, that's With right. the slide in the middle of it. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was the Kugel. So that was really cool. And we as we met Don Musk up there from Poland. Yeah. Do with the, yeah I think he was there in the 6 Series, right? That's what yep. he was drifting up drifting. that road. Yeah. New The new 6 Series. Yeah. It's, it's so hard to remember. The drive to finish the Falcon Tilt movie when we all drove up the mountain later in the evening with nobody else around yeah. with Ben's E28, Jules 100, the Keen boys in the Ferrari, Christian in the Porsche, Marcel in the Mercedes, uh, Dean Z32. Yeah. I think there might've been a couple other cars, but yeah, we just all hung out in that parking lot as they shot like drone footage and stuff. And we're just, oh man, I, it's just, yeah. I wish money grew on trees. I know, man. I just want to travel and hang out with my friends. Horrible, <laughs> Yeah, and so I can't remember any too too many other like highlight points. They were all highlight points. Um, there was one other day we met up with um, Hape. Yes, I think was his name. Yep, and we yeah, went to Finland. that. Yeah, we went to that one vineyard. Oh, unbelievable! The, looked yeah. like Italy. It did. Yeah. Um, it basically was. Yeah. Like we're, Velden is south. 
It's basically like Southwest Austria and the Italy, the Italian border is like 45 minutes away. Right, exactly. And, and obviously Italy and Switzerland have the Alps that divide them too. So, yeah, but basically. it looked like a scene out of Gladiator. Yeah. With the trees. With and those the old... trees with the, with the like, um, pruned, I guess if you they're cut, just, you cut real... the trees to like, yeah. Yeah, to, exactly. They all look the same. They're manicured. Yeah, manicured. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, it just looked like, like a scene out of a painting, but, but better. We yeah. shot, so Hoppe shot Alex's US spec six series. There That's that right. Day too. Yeah. Who had a TGC sticker on That's it. That's right. Oh my gosh. What yeah, an they, honor, man. Yeah. What an honor. We had six or seven cars there laid out, you know, together. Yep. For photos. And then, yeah, there's so many highlights. There is. It, just, you know, meeting up with Peter who shot, uh, Jules in Marcel's car in the middle of that field that looked yeah, like we were Peter, in the middle of the Sound of Music. Peter Massoni. Yep. yep. The, that road that just went through the middle of that field That's with, the, right. with the Alps in the background. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so that was really cool. And then then the Mecca started and hanging out at Turbo Corner was yeah. really cool. That famous spot where you see all the Mark 1s and 2s doing burnouts you know, yeah. in the old videos. And then on the way home, on the way home, we came through Stuttgart and did two major bucket list stops. Absolutely. Porsche Museum. And Mercedes, Mercedes Museum. Now, along the way, this is so crazy. So when we first arrived in Cologne before we left for War of the Z, I've made a post on Instagram saying like, you know, head, headed to Austria. And this guy, a few weeks previous to that, to precursor this even farther, this guy, Benny, started following me on Instagram and, and had almost immediately direct messaged me like a photo of an E23, because I still had my E23 at the time. Yeah. DM'd me a photo of an E23 in like the woods. It was in Germany, but like in the woods of like this junkyard. And I was like, wow, that's so cool. And so I clicked on his page and he had like 30 something thousand followers. So I was like, oh, this guy like must do something cool with cars. You know, yeah. He's got like a pretty big audience. So I started looking through his page and he's got a lot of like VW Motorsport stuff, a lot of Mark 1 and Mark 2 stuff, a lot of BMW content, a lot of Porsche content. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. So I don't follow a ton of people on Instagram and I didn't know this guy, but I, I followed him. I remember being one of the quickest follow backs that I'd ever yeah. done. Cause I was like, <laughs> I was like, yeah, this seems like, this guy seems like he's posted a lot of really cool stuff. So now leading up to when we first got the cologne before we went on the War of the Z, yeah. I made the post that we were headed to War of the Z or whatever. And it, no, I take that back. It was leaving War of the Z on our way to Stuttgart. I said, you know, headed to Stuttgart. That's right. And Benny messaged me after he saw that story post and he said, uh, swing by the Porsche Museum. Something like swing by the Porsche Museum and see me. Yeah. And I was like, that guy's at the Porsche Museum? Yeah. What? Well, that's, that's a wild coincidence. So I messaged back. I said, yeah, it's actually where we're headed. We're headed to Porsche and Mercedes. And he said, he said, what time, what time do you think you'll, you'll be here? And I was like, I, I don't know. I was like, it was going to be like noon or something. Right. And he said, how many people? And I'm thinking, Oh, uh, let's yeah. go. Oh, there were six of us. I'm like three cars, six of us. And he said, park underneath the building in the parking garage and give the secretary your name. There'll be six passes waiting for you. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, what? Yeah. I was like, excuse me. I remember texting everyone in the convoy. Like, like we're because people want to know how much it was to get in. And yeah. I'm like, we're in. Yeah. We're in. Like, apparently I just got to drop my name at the front desk <laughs> and they're going to give us passes. Mm -hmm. So, so we got there. And we're freaking out. Yeah, of course. I mean, we checked into the hotel first because we were doing, we weren't going to do Porsche and then rush over to Mercedes. That's right. I told Marcel that. I said, we're taking an extra day because we're- day for each. I'm, I'm excited to do Porsche, but Mercedes. Mercedes. <laughs> Mercedes. Mercedes is my, oh my gosh. That was like, I've got Mercedes goosebumps thinking about heart. it. I'm like, we're going, you, dude, we got down into the parking garage. I started just, losing my just mind. Just the parking garage. I know. I we weren't even inside. So, so we get the Porsche and I'm losing my mind. We're in Germany. We're at the Porsche Museum. And there's some dude there that has left us tickets to yeah. go in. So Benny said, let me know when you're here. And I'll, I see, he said, I'm in meetings, but I'll catch up with you on the floor somewhere. So I'm like, who is this guy? Yeah. <laughs> and what does he do here? You know, this is some random guy that like caught me on Followed Instagram. You on Instagram, yeah. And so we're walking around and we're just, you know, sensory overload. Of we're course. looking at all Absolutely. the, all the old, like, you know, everything from the old bathtub cars to the first, like, 356 like Le Mans cars race cars all the way through all the race cars everything you know the Every, 907s and, yep. or whatever everything. those yeah, 906, everything yeah 907 and so we get we get around to like the more modern stuff we're getting around to like group 5 type stuff 935 stuff 
and um, here comes Benny. And I remember seeing photos of him on his Instagram. Tall, well-dressed, real clean cut, yeah. nice, expensive-looking spectacles. <laughs> Very well-put-together man. And, but he's like our age, a few years older than me, yeah. maybe, late 30s. And he comes walking down, I introduce myself, and I'm like, Danke schon. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for this. This is incredible. And he's like, oh, no problem. Excited that you guys are here. It's so cool to finally meet you. And I was like, what do you do here? Like, what, what, what do you do here? Yeah. He goes, oh, I'm in not so many words. However, he said it. He's like, basically like, oh, I uh, I manage the, the the lot. And I'm like, "The wait, what? Because yes, I, I manage, I, I manage I, the I manage, you know, I manage all the cars. I'm in yeah. charge of the cars and manage the place. Yeah. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like, what? Are you kidding? Who are you? This dude runs the Porsche Museum. Yeah. I mean, you know, for lack of a better term. Of course, more or less. From the translation I got, it was basically, I'm the dude that like, I manage the place. Yeah. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. What a small world. So that was incredible. Yeah. Absolutely incredible. I really wish we'd had more time with him. It was shortly after that trip that he started doing a lot more with Jean-Pierre. Yeah, that's right. And got involved with Porsche with Jean-Pierre and he started doing more Monaco stuff, like yeah. the, the vintage Monaco races and stuff. And Benny has like on his own, apart from Porsche has blown up because him and Jean-Pierre have done a lot of YouTube stuff together and a yeah. lot of like taking a lot of vintage race cars on these old vintage race circuits, you know, like around Monaco and then uh, Mil Miglia and all that stuff. That's right. It, it just yeah. incredible stuff. Incredible stuff. So it was really cool. I, I And I keep telling him, I said, I'm going to come back to Germany and spend more time with you. Like, yeah. we, we need to hang out more. This is going to be incredible. So Porsche was unbelievable. We got that done first day. And as a side note for Porsche, I remember we got up to the end, like top floor, end of the museum, <laughs> and I soaked it all in. Looked kind of quickly at one of my favorite Porsches in the world. Yep. One of my favorite, most, most technologically advanced for the time yes. Porsches. Yep. And admired it from kind of afar. And then I remember everyone else was kind of hanging out in that area. So I went and sat down on like these stairs. And I'm just sitting there kind of absorbing the day and where we're at. And you come walking over and you're like, hey, man. Did you see that 959 over there? And I was like, oh yeah. First, you know, the all-wheel drive, yeah. port, you know, the technologically advanced 911. Yep. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I'm like, yeah, I saw it. It's pretty incredible. And you're like, you should go over there and take a closer look at it. How close did you get to it? And I'm like, and I look, I look over at it and I look back at you and you're like, just kind of like nodded your head and I'm like, yeah. okay. So I go walking over there, not knowing what to look at. Yeah. So as I'm walking up to it, I'm looking at the exterior. I'm like, it's a 959. Doesn't seem like it's got anything super crazy. Yeah. It's 959 on like the it wasn't on twists, but whatever that OEM right. wheel was. And I'm walking around it. But I had a feeling like I needed to look inside. So I walk <laughs> over to the driver's door and I look up at you and you kind of nod your head. And I like lean down like to like look inside the window and I look at you again. And you kind of nod your head. And I kind of like without touching the car kind of looked in. Yeah. And I looked, I went right for the right for the odometer. Yeah. I knew that's probably what of you're talking course. about. That's German car. So it's kilometers. kilometers. And the one hadn't quite made <laughs> its first like revolution click. and all, all it, was, zeros. it was preceded by all zeros yeah. <laughs> and i was like that's like a quarter of a mile which <laughs> means it was assembled in the factory across the street yes and rolled or maybe driven yeah maybe driven maybe maybe it got started maybe and driven into the museum and parked and that was it that's its life unbelievable yeah it barely had one kilometer on it yep if it was one or two, but I'm pretty sure it was one. I've got I think a, it was I, one. I took yeah. a photo of it. Yeah. yeah. Yes, that was pretty nuts. That was that was worth noting for the Porsche Museum. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so we went back to the hotel, went out to dinner in Stuttgart, went and washed the cars. Then the next day, Mercedes. Oh my gosh, oh. Mercedes. Yeah. So Mercedes. Now this isn't a slight to the Porsche Museum, but Mercedes is on a different level technologically yep. for their museum. Uh, yeah. Everything's everything's wireless. They give you what looks like an iPhone in, in that little headset. And each room you enter, it knows what room you've entered. And yeah. it starts talking about what room you're in and what's in there and the history of what's in there. And it's like, it just it just knows where you're at. And we took this crazy elevator. Well, first of all, when we got into the parking garage, we drove down to the parking garage. Now the parking garage underneath the museum is also used for the Classic Center. Yeah, The Classic Center parks some of their like, their personal cars in there or the cars that are involved with the classic center yeah so we drive down in there and there's a few like real beautiful w108s and we there's an r129 over there and i've always wanted an, a manual r129 they only built i don't remember a google search would would confirm this but i think it's like 
100 or 200 or maybe even less than that yeah worldwide made in the manual yeah in the r129 i shouldn't even be putting this out there because i'm still trying to quietly hunt for <laughs> one know. but all the manual r129s to the best of my knowledge were dogleg geared yep. boxes yeah which is just incredible so it's like it's got motorsport in its veins Absolutely. you know what i mean like the i'm not one for a convertible if i had an r129 that hard top is staying on it at all times <laughs> yeah but uh so there's an R129 park down there in the, along with a few of the other cars, vintage cars that are part of the Classic Center, like overflow parking. And as we got out, I'd never seen a manual R129 in person mm -hmm. before. And as we got out, before I walked over there, I said, yep. what do you want to bet that that one right there is a manual? Yep. And I walk over there and I look inside and just about fell over backwards. <laughs> There was three pedals and a shifter in the center console. Yep. And I zoomed in with my phone, zoomed in, took a photo so the resolution would like get better. Yeah. Dog leg box pattern. Yep. In first gear, pulled towards <gasps> you. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's a dream. Yep. Oh my gosh. Okay, so the Cosworths came with a dog leg yes. box. I mean, that's motorsport. Yeah. Second, third in yep. a row because yep. you're in banging row. through those gears, you know, through the chicanes, through the corners, through yep. the back stretches or whatever. So it was just so, so cool to see an OEM dog box in an R129. And sure enough, so we go inside, we take the elevator up to the main office. Unfortunately, we didn't have to drop my name to get free tickets. <laughs> we had to pay. Yeah. <laughs> if Out of any of the museums, that would have been the one. Of course. Like, this is my pilgrimage. Yeah. But there's a, a C107. It was the long wheelbase 107. Right. Which I had never seen one in person. And it's like in the reception area yeah. I'm like we're never getting the museum yet <laughs> yeah, I'm freaking, freaking out. out in the parking garage I'm freaking out at the at the reception desk yeah. we didn't even enter the museum yet oh man we could talk for hours about what we saw in there but absolutely we, yeah the 300 SLR 300 SLR I mean, I'm sorry the 300 SL transporter with the 300 SL drivetrain yes the one of one yep they've rebuilt that one because the original one was crushed or That's something right. insane but the hauler that crazy Mercedes hauler that was built to haul the 300 SL race car going race cars could do over a hundred miles an hour while hauling the 300 SL on totally it. Totally insane. It, it had the it had the race motor in it. Yeah. Jay Leno has has a replica version of that oh, of yeah, that yeah. rig. Yeah. It's it's not like an original Mercedes built one. It's like a it's like a it's a tribute built one. Yeah. But as as perfect a replica could be built. Like probably priceless replica. I'm sure. You know? Yeah. Um, Cause I'm pretty sure, I don't think that, that one doesn't have the 300 SL motor in it, but it's got a, uh, it's got a period correct straight six, like the SL motor. But so didn't have crazy. that, didn't have that hard lean. Yeah. Like the, like the SL motors did. But so anyway, Mercedes was incredible. Seeing some of Sterling Moss's race cars was oh, just yeah. unbelievable. Seeing a CLK GTR in person, seeing the W108 that won the 24 hour Le Mans, the, yeah. the red one. Even uh, even the way they displayed all the cars was just mind blowing. Incredible. Incredible. Yeah, incredible. Yeah. To see the Messerschmitt, to see the Messerschmitt Mercedes V12s that were mounted upside down, yeah. to see those hanging on the wall. I mean, being a World War II nerd, I lost my mind when I saw yep. that stuff. Just and I I stood and stared at every plaque and like read every plaque. <laughs> and we're trying to move through so we're not there for four and a half days, but I'm like, I'm absorbing all this you stuff. Had to, I'm yeah. taking photos of like all the plaques so I can yeah. read it later on the yeah. plane home. That's right. So after Stuttgart yeah, we went back to Cologne. Yeah. Had the TGC Germany meet, barbecue. Barbecue, yeah. What a cool, super cool spot. Oh, what a cool night. All the dudes from the Netherlands came down. Dennis yep. and the E23. Um, yeah, just, it was so, so cool. Like, Netherlands, Germany, we didn't have, like, a lot of Eastern Germany guys come out because that's just, like, a seven or eight-hour drive. It was just, like, an evening get-together. But I've got a photo of all of us, and I've never posted it on Instagram. And what's funny is I, I've never posted it because – it, it sounds so crazy, but there's so many people to tag. It was going to take too long to make the <laughs> yeah, post because I, I, just so many people. I know it. But I'm going to, I've been meaning to reshare the photos of that event because I basically only posted it minute by minute on Instagram stories. Yep. And I want to like make some throwback photos because that was, it was such an honor to like have that dude open up his shop in the cafe across the street. Yeah. And we had the banners flying. They had the barrel fires going in the street. Like yeah. we took over the whole street. I know all the cars. It it was, it was yeah. It was just an iconic night for me. I'm like, this for is real. so nuts. We're we're in another country. We're in Germany, and this thing that I started as a joke has somehow <laughs> brought me together. Brought us together yeah. with these guys in Germany, and they're like having this meet 
for us. We did a meet at Worthesy too. Yeah, we did. I should yeah. say that. We didn't touch on that. But having a TGC meet, an impromptu TGC meet in a parking lot overlooking the Alps at Worthesy was another dream come true. Yeah. And we had a lot of people. A lot of, a lot awesome of people. cars. All the guys from Switzerland that showed up. That's right. That were like, that were getting us to put stickers on their cars. Yeah. And like, they were like, no, you have to put the sticker on the yep. car. And I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like, this is incredible. So to be there with the Alps surrounding us and all these guys from all these different countries and different cultures, and we're all there for the same common reason, you know, cause we're all in the cars and it was so cool, man. I guess it, yeah, I, I smile ear to ear when I, I think I, about me it. Me too, man. It's so cool. Yeah. Literally life changing trip. Yeah, absolutely. Like, absolutely. And so to, yeah, to do a TGC meet there, then in Cologne, that was a really cool night. And from there, we, yeah, we'll talk about the rental car. Oh yeah. So from Circle there, circle back around to that. So from there, from Cologne, we were now driving on to Dresden. It's like a seven and a half hour drive. Yep. We we're going to stay with the Falcon Tilt boys. We were going to stay with uh, Bremi, and I think Bremi was just living with his girlfriend at the time. But Kevin was obviously there. Yeah. And Clemens was there. Yeah. The whole, I mean, Marty and Adri- Andrea, the whole Falcon Tilt cruise in Dresden. But we were going to stay with Bremi right. and spend most of our time with Clemens and uh, Kevin. So, and Kevin's been a long time TGC guy with his yeah. 28. Yeah. Like one of the first dudes. Heck yeah. So we're getting ready. We're this, at this point, Ben and Tom drive back on England. Yeah. Frank got an Airbnb in Cologne and you and I stayed with Marcel. And that next morning we were going to get the rental car and make the drive. So we were getting breakfast with Marcel at his place. And Frank calls me and says, says, Hey, I forgot how it came up. So for for glazing over everything for the cliff notes, Frank's basically like, hey, so uh, I forgot my credit card. Yeah. And I was like, what? He's like, yeah. Uh, I think I might have called him saying, hey, did you sort out the rental car? Yeah, that was it. We're going to we're gonna meet up. You know, we're finishing up breakfast. We're going to meet up and we'll head to Dresden. Yeah. Because we, we want to get a we jump on go. We're yeah, going to get we a jump on right the day. Yeah, yeah. It's like a seven hour drive. We want to get there before it's too late. Yeah. And I'd like to do the drive during the day so we can see everything. Yeah. Driving straight across Germany. It goes, yeah, uh, about that. Um, yeah, I forgot my credit card. Oh, no, I forgot what he said first. He goes, oh, so Hertz and Avis won't take a debit card. Yeah. And I said, yeah, that was my problem. Yeah, I know. That, yep. That's because I didn't have a credit card. Exactly. So so use your credit card. That's why That's why you said, don't that's, worry about it. Yeah. Like when I was stressing out about the planning, don't worry about it. I've got a credit card. We'll we'll just we'll get the rental car in my name. I said so. Just rent, get get a rental car and let us know what's going to cost. He goes, Yeah. Well, all I've got is my debit card. I was like, What are you saying? What are you saying? And he goes, I forgot my credit card. Yeah. And and I I think he said I left it at the dealership that I run, so the people that are running my dealership can pay for things that they need or something like that. I think he'd right? forgotten it. Maybe he that did might have been it. that might have been a retort. Like, well, okay, maybe, you know, this yeah. is, might have been why I forgot it. Yeah, but it was like I like I searched for it and I do not have it. Yes, and I was basically like, you had one job, <laughs> and I did get. I've told Frank this straight up. Like since then, as we as we like reminisce the story, I was like, no, nah, dude, I was like, yeah, I was pretty stressed out. Ooh, yeah. So so Frank goes, and I'm sit, We're sitting in Marcel's kitchen, sitting at the table eating, and I'm on the phone with him and. And I'm like, you what? He goes, I didn't bring, I didn't bring my credit card. And I'm like, you know, this is, you told me to not worry about this, so I didn't, I, did, I, I left it in your hands. Yeah. And so, so Frank goes, in the moment, Frank goes, can you, uh, can you search to see if there's any other rental car companies that'll just take a debit card? And I said, no, I'm gonna search for plane tickets. Yeah. And he goes, what? Because I'm like, can get on a I said, plane. I said, Corey and I are jumping on a plane or taking a bus to Dresden. Yeah. So let me know if you can get a rental car. Yeah. And he's like, uh, okay. And so I literally, you, I was, I had pulled you, my computer out. I'm looking at yeah, planes, pl- flights. I'm looking at buses. Yep. I'm like, oh, the bus is gonna take like 10 hours, 12 hours. I'm like, but we could get on a plane in Cologne and fly to Dresden for like 100 euro or something. Yep. And so finally, I think through Avis. Frank sorted it out. Whether or not they had to get all, get on the phone with the, the girl he had running the shop, yes. and give a credit card number or whatever, something like that. Sorted it out. Probably could have sorted it out without calling me and stressing me out. Probably, <laughs> yeah. probably could have been like, call her, be like, hey, you know, give these numbers, give me the number for yeah. the credit card, and I'll give it to them over the phone or yeah. I don't, whatever could have been done. So we get it sorted out. We get a really sweet Kia five door hatch oh my god yeah I, I kind of forgot about that part <laughs> we tried i couldn't i tried too but i couldn't so we got a car that maxed out at like 75 miles an hour yeah 
I mean, maybe 90, to be fair. Yeah, it was probably 90. It felt like 40 on the Autobahn. Yeah, because cars are going 150 yeah, and around doing, you. Yeah, terrible. But it was super cheap, mega cheap, like 30 bucks a day or something like yeah. that. So we got the rental car, crisis averted. Yeah. Didn't have to leave Frank because I was like ready to just <laughs> I know. weave him to his own Jeez. devices. Like, see you in Dresden, yeah. maybe. Yeah. You know? So See you back in the States. Yeah, exactly. So we got the Kia. We drove cross country. That was amazing. Driving across Germany. Got into Dresden, stayed with them for a couple of days, saw the Falcon Tilt headquarters, yes. uh, which is part of the Messer wheel building and like all their stuff in there was really cool. That tattoo, whatever clothing thing that they've got going on. Yep. Hung out with them and walked around Dresden, got the most amazing lamb donner. Oh my God. It's the so lamb good. donner like kebab platter yep. with the cheese curds, like the fried cheese curds and stuff. Oh man. And so I've got photos of all that. I've got photos of us at oh, that yeah. table eating that lamb donner. And uh, yeah, so then that night, we drove into Krakow, Poland. That's right. It was like a four hour drive, four and a half hour drive from there. Yeah. And I'll never forget, we left Dresden and shortly thereafter crossed into Poland. Yeah. At this point, it was like midnight maybe. Yeah. We crossed the Polish border into Poland and I'm driving. And the first car we come up on on the highway in Poland is a lot of yes <laughs> some some old man driving a lot of yeah and i lost my mind i'm yeah. like i have one of those <laughs> i just bought one yeah so it was so it was so like it felt so correct to be in poland yes which is you know it's been a war-torn country and it's it's a somber country you know yeah. when i think of poland i think of like the nicest people in the world the most resilient people in the world yeah and but people who but farmers who drive Lada's, you yeah, know, I mean? like it's yeah. Eastern Europe. Yeah. So we drive. You know, the first car we see after we cross the border to Poland's a old timer driving a Lada. I'm like, this is perfect. So, so we, Bremi, who's from Poland, Bremi's Polish, was telling us, you know, when you drive on your way in the Krakow, uh, when you cross the border, there's a 24 hour cash point. Yeah. Which will, you know, which is. British and European for ATM. Yeah. But a cash point money that exchange. will that will exchange your money for yeah. you. Yeah. So. You know, we, we stopped there, tiny little like glass box yeah, with a woman phone, in there. Basically oversized phone booth. Yep, with a little woman behind a glass door in there, a glass window. And it had all the conversion charts or whatever. And so I had, we all had like Euro. And I sold a lot of key rings on the trip at the car meet. So I had a bunch of Euro yep. I wanted to convert. And I remember giving her like, I remember looking at the conversion and I'm, I'm trying to decipher it. I'm like, I think that's because we're converting into Polish Zlachi. Yeah. So I'm like, I think I'm getting a lot of Zlachi yeah. back. <laughs> yeah. So I gave her like 60 or 80 euro and I got like 300 Polish Zl- Zlachi back. Probably more. Back, yeah, I think maybe. more than that. Yeah. Because we were doing the Auschwitz Birkenau tour the next morning. Right. So we had an Airbnb in Krakow, right in downtown Krakow, right yeah. next to the church. This is like an old. And I don't know the history of Krakow through World War II, but this is like a tiny little city that somehow survived the the war. That's exactly it, yeah. Um, because there's a lot of old architecture in that town. The, that city has, ex- it, it's almost like it's existing with 1940s and 50s technology. Yeah. The the public transportation is still, is still um, uh, like train cart with the overhead wires. Right. And you can hear it coming yep. <laughs> as it's going by, and it's it's re, 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 down yeah. the middle of the street, making the cars are following it because it's, it's the streets were built for the trolleys. That's right. And we got in at like two in the morning or yeah, something like it that. It was super late. Super late. And we had and our tour was at seven a.m., so we had to be up before six. So we only had a couple hours of sleep. We got to the Airbnb, which is just like an apartment in this building right next to the church, right right in in the downtown square. Yep. So we get in, we go to sleep. I'm up first before you guys. So I decide I'm going to go for a walk. I'm going to see this place. Because after after the Auschwitz-Birkenau tour, we weren't staying another night. We were hammering another five hours back into Germany to Berlin. Yeah. So I went for a walk in the morning. Figured I'd try to go find like a coffee shop or somewhere to get like a Danish or yeah, something, maybe. you know. So I go out and it's a weekday. So it's six in the morning at this point, And there's a lot of hustling and bustling. And everybody's on their way to work. I walk around the, the building that our apartment was in, around in front of the church, and you, I'm looking at the big square courtyard of like downtown Krakow. And I'll never forget how it made me feel, and I don't really know how to describe it, but young and old people alike, but it felt like mostly young people between their 20s and 30s walking to the train or the, the trolleys to take to work with like a pep in their step, yep. dressed well. Everybody's dressed well like yeah. like the women are wearing either like 
either like women's suits or like dresses or like you know just like yeah just like just work business yeah like like, business attire yeah all, well dressed. all the young guys were wearing suits and ties yeah and they'd have like their their bag like up or their satchel up under their arm and they're walking chest out kind of like you know like very assertive and and you know determined look on their yeah. face they're just but the 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 mood and the vibe was very light like everything yeah. it was just like we're off to work you know yeah. and, and and i walked around that square and then i found like this place that had like danishes and coffee like on the backside but i remember walking down that main street passing a lot of people getting on the trolleys and people looking at people in the trolleys and everyone's smiling and i'm like man this is so crazy happy to be alive yeah there's like everybody was like dressed to be out yep on like a Wednesday morning or whatever day in during the week it was. So then we went, you know, I met up with you guys. We, we got on the van to some dude that drives a van that takes you out to the, it's like a third party that takes you out to Auschwitz. Yeah. Yeah. And without going too far into that. Yeah. We could talk all day about that, but so being a history nerd, that's somewhere I said this before in the episode, this is where I'd always wanted to see, just wanted to step foot and just be there. Yep. And just, kind of absorb what happened there and experience being on that soil and and, and where so many were especially at Birkenau because that was a death camp you yeah. know you get off the you get off the train and right down into the into the gas chambers and right into the furnaces like and to be standing there so when we we went to Auschwitz first and and once our tour assembled we had a we had like an older Polish lady that was our tour guide and you wore this little headset and she spoke very softly. And, and I felt like that was perfect because there were some other guys that spoke with a little bit more of a projected voice. <clears throat> but I felt like her soft voice like fit the mood for where we were and how, yeah. how serious I was taking it. Yeah. And we stepped up to the gate. The work will set you free, you know, the, yep. the main gate. And we're standing there and I am bawling my eyes out. I've got tears running down my face mm -hmm. and I can't, I'm getting choked up thinking about it. I'm standing there staring at the gate from the outside looking in, yep. knowing I'm about to step inside where so many people never left, yep. you know? The last thing a lot of people saw. And I just remember standing apart from the group a little bit because I didn't want to like, I don't know, I don't want to be seen like completely losing my composure. But I'm standing there staring at the gate, looking through the fence, looking through that electrified, you know, those, those arch, those real looming yeah. arched, like primitive electric fences. And tears streaming down my face. I, I just, I couldn't, I was overwhelmed. Yeah. And when we walked in there, they, they, all the, all the tours, the little groups were, were, were separated so much that you really got a chance to see the place empty. And when, when they walked you through the different buildings and they've kept all the articles, I mean, yeah, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, we don't need to talk about all the real dark, real no. dark stuff, but, um, yeah, empty cans of Zyklon B. And uh, the, yeah, the room with all the women's hair in it. That's I mean, it just, that's when I lost. I wasn't gonna bring that up, but that's when I lost my composure. The shoes, the the shoes, spectacles, all the glasses, and the, the fact that they were selling their hair to like shoe companies and stuff. And, yeah, like, it's just, yeah, that was overwhelmingly emotional for me. Absolutely. And I remember, the, I remember the ride back to Krakow in the van. On the way there, everyone's kind of talking because there were other people on the tour that were in the van with us. We yeah. weren't really talking with them, but there was just conversation in the van. Yeah. And on the way back, there's not a word was no. said. We're just no. sitting there staring out the windscreen or out the side window, just vacant. Yeah. And that's it's the heaviest place I've ever been, ever. Man, I mean, and what's crazy about Birkenau? I mean, Auschwitz was liberated and left standing, mm -hmm. but Birkenau, the Nazis like destroyed Birkenau as much as they could before retreating. Yeah. And the allied forces uh, never touched it. Like the, the furnace rooms. I mean, we walked into one of the furnace rooms, Yeah. but the other two, the main two, I forget the buildings. It might've just been building one and building two. The rubble, the rubble is still like untouched. Yep. The rubble is like when the Nazis bombed it and, or blew it up and got out of there. Yep. The allied yeah. forces never, it's just yeah. as it were in 1945 when yep. they, or 44 when they yeah, got the, out of there. The Russians invaded and and cleaned house. Yeah, the the Russians, if I have it right, the Russians liberated Auschwitz. Okay. Yeah, maybe. I, have, uh, I thought it was Birkenau, but yeah. Yeah, I might have that wrong, so don't quote me on that. I can't remember. But either way, 
Yeah. But anyway, it was, yeah, it was very, very tough, but important for me. Absolutely. I know for you for too, me but too, I mean, yeah. but it was important for me in my like lifespan to go there yeah. and let it break me apart. Yeah. Like, it, like I needed that place to like ruin me. Yeah. Like I, I needed it. Cause now when I watch all the world war two documentaries and, and you watch things about the death camps, the prison camps, the work camps, the labor camps, yep. all that stuff. It's like whew, watching boy. watching those documentaries before going there, and then being there and seeing the same buildings. Yeah, it was. It's you can't even put it into words. I remember mentioning that. I said, if you haven't seen, I know you probably had, but I remember telling you, like, if you haven't seen any documentaries about yeah. Auschwitz, watch them before we go. Because yeah, it'll, I had. Yeah, it'll just because I did. I rewatched everything I could about to like refresh it in my head. And yeah. then when we went there, it was just like me too completely overwhelming yeah i'd i'd written i've read books in high school about it and yeah watched all the documentaries yeah and before we went into poland you know like i just said we spent a couple of days in dresden and yeah. dresden was one of the most one of the the most bombed and destroyed cities in germany or of all the european theater that's in right. World war ii i mean we we as in the allied forces decimated dresden like like that's why sorry about dresden the bombing of dresden like we obliterated yeah. that city and so all the while that we're walking around the city, and it was a beautiful day when we were there. Yeah, it was. All the old limestone? I think so. Yeah, so whatever stone turns black, like in that, like the old the old buildings that are still standing from Dresden that are now like turning black from just age and weathering and stuff, yeah. it blew my mind to see original buildings still standing in Dresden. Because it's like, I thought we leveled this place. Because yeah. Dresden was just obliterated. So it was really kind of crazy to... Um, because most of Dresden, most of like all the residential apartments and stuff are Soviet built, just blocks. You yeah. know, there's no archi beautiful architecture. It's just, it's like the east side of Berlin. It's just, yeah. it's just like Soviet, like put apartments there and communism, get to work, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. And so to go from Dresden, like a war-torn city that's now flourishing and built up obviously, but just all of its history for architecture is like barely hanging on. It's like yeah. all gone. Then to go to Auschwitz-Birkenau and then to drive up into Berlin to see Berlin and know that that was the epicenter yeah. that's where like we had to get to berlin i mean that's that's where the third reich was stationed that's where like nazi headquarters yes. was and just it, it was so crazy to, to involve the car stuff involve friends but to do all the world war ii history stuff yes. was really really cool so yeah we got to berlin hung out with max got some of the best turkish food i'd ever had that's in my right. life yeah. tried black tea for the first time yeah and then we kept going back to that uh, lamb donner little, little, uh, yeah. yeah, like if you want to call it a hut or a, uh, I don't know what you'd call those little, those kind of like a food truck, yeah, type. stationary, yeah, static food truck, yeah, yeah, that was really good. Then we had the bratwurst, currywurst, currywurst, right down the street, yep. down the block there. We yep. got to see classic Ramai's. That's right. Oh man. That like facility where richest of the rich men like store their cars with like highest end cars, glass like, elevators with like 300 SL gull wings and like uh Dinos and just just the best of the best cars, yeah, just literally, yeah, short wheelbase Audi Quattro coupes, sport quattros, yeah, <laughs> so nuts, yeah. So that was pretty cool. You could just walk in there and walk around. Max is like, you really like this place. I'm like, yeah, and we will go down there. And it's yeah. Like, oh, my And then the gosh. back, the, the different uh, garages shops. that were, yeah, the different shops that were like, you know, there was one specific to building the gull wings. Restoring gull wings. Restoring gull wings. Unreal. And there was like a Jaguar shop, you know, it was each. Yep. A bunch of different shops. Then there was a Simca wagon that I lost my mind over. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> like out of all these beautiful, like unobtainable, like high-end cars, there's yeah. a little Simca wagon. <laughs> like a little like, I think that was an Italian wagon, right? Was Simca Italian? Um, it looked either Eastern European yeah, or they, Italian. Yeah, yeah. Because it looked like a mix between a Fiat Panda wagon, like yes. a Fiat Panda 1 wagon. Yes. And like a lot of 2102 estate that's or something. Right. You know what I mean? It was like the, yeah. And I wanted it. It was for sale too, but I, I just bought the lot. Of, yeah. I think that they wanted like 10 grand for this thing. But yeah. Regardless, that place was amazing. Then we did one of those app rental cars and got in an i3. That's right. And yeah. I was blown away by how fast that thing is. Yeah. How quick, I should say. Yep. Went and got some of the best lemonade ever. Oh, there. yeah. Yeah. We went back to that place a couple of times. Yeah, like ginger lemonade. Unreal. Oh, my gosh. I want to go back There's, so bad. Th yeah. Man. And Max. Oh, man. Yeah, Max is trying to get us to come back. And I'm like, I'm listening, man. I'm listening. Trust <laughs> me. There's so many places. Yeah. The, yeah. I've said it before, but 2020 was 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 grounded. I was, was planning on going to Sochi, Russia for grounded. 
and was planning on going to Japan. Those are the two new places I haven't been to yet this year, obviously, yeah. or last year technically now. So 2020 kind of put an end to that. So I'm hoping once things open up, things seem a little bit more calm and international travel is easier. Those are still the two on the Absolutely. on the big list. Yeah. So. Yeah, and so from Berlin, we hung out in Berlin for probably four days. We were there for yeah, I think so, uh, or at least three days. The last few days before we flew home, I wanted to make sure we got to Berlin and could like enjoy that city a little bit. That's why I was like, I kept bouncing it off you. I'm like, so we should probably do more than a week. And you're like, yeah, I'm down. It's like, do you want to do two weeks? And you're like, yeah, I'm down. Because I knew you were getting a new job, and I'm like, oh, I don't know. So then I was finally like, after laying it all out, I'm like, dang, we're gonna. That's not enough time. Do you want to do three weeks? Yeah. You're like, it's cool. And I'm like, all right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because I, I figured if I saved up enough. I was like, enough, man, I, man, I'm all in. Whatever. Yeah. I was yeah, so stoked that you were go. like, because yeah, I, I was almost going to be like, we'll drop you off at an airport. You can't, <laughs> I know. you can't do more than two weeks. Yeah. So yeah, that that worked out really well because that was a good amount of time. I mean, you could obviously stay over there for six months. Of course. but Or forever. But yeah. And then we flew home from Berlin. Yeah. And uh, yeah, what an incredible experience. What an incredible trip. Filled with, filled with friends and good food and good weather, a phenomenal weather, and some of the most amazing cars. Lots of motivation on the car front, motivation on the automotive business end of things, and uh, lots of historical uh, ar- architectural places. Lots of somber, you know, historical places as well. Yep. It was an all encompassing trip, and and I will know. I didn't I didn't focus on it too much, or I didn't even mention it in this episode, but. My family's from Germany. That's right. Oh yeah. And my dad, my dad really kind of chased down the Ludwig lineage and where we came from. And it was a little town called Nenderoth, Germany. And you obviously know all this because you were there with me. Yeah. But back a few years ago, my dad dove down the rabbit hole to kind of, yeah, kind of follow the lineage. And we traced our family. You know, it's Ludwig, but it was Ludwig back when it was in Germany. And we're about two hundred years here. They came over here in like the early 1800s, yep. late 1700s or something. It was early 1800s, I think. So, it was, yeah, 1820s or something like that. He figured out. So we, he traced them to Germantown, a Germantown. It might have even been, been called Germantown at some point in Maine. So when they when they came over on a boat from that's Germany, right. they came down under England, and they came right in the Maine, and that's where they settled in Maine. So we actually drove up there. And my dad had found where some of these people were buried. And we searched these cemeteries and found their headstones, Dang. which was really, really cool. And I wasn't as, I mean, it was cool to me, but my it was my dad's, like my dad was the one who was getting the most, uh, I don't know, like joy, I guess you could say. But he was, yeah. it, was, it was the most important to him at the time. Yeah. yeah. I thought it was really cool, but I was like living vicariously through him at the time. But then it started to really be way more important to me we went up to Maine we saw these headstones I'm like wow like these are part these are people from my family yeah. like, I came from like this family this is pretty crazy and looking at these headstones that are 200 years old in these in this old German uh church it's like an old German church with a German the church's graveyard behind it yeah and so we traced them to, to Nenderoth Germany and what year they had left and who they were and a couple family members had died aboard ship who got dropped off at like uh, Isle of Cow or Cut Cow's Island, C O W E, south of England. And one of them was buried there. And so, anyways, my dad had looked up photos of Nenderoth and he, yeah. had, he had showed photos of it. And it's like, yeah, it looks like this a small country town, middle of nowhere. The same people who started the Ludwig Drum Company are from that town. So we're like descendants in a way because it's a small little village. Yeah. So when we were planning this whole trip out, we knew, I knew we were going to be staying in Cologne, Dresden. In Berlin. Yeah. So I Googled Nenderoth. I'm like, I wonder where this place is. And sure enough, it was like an hour outside of Cologne. That's right. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. So I talked to Marcel and I gave him this whole spiel about my, and you know, Marcel specifically, but also most of the German people I know are very like family based. Like yeah. It's very important History, where you're from. And um, family line. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Like your, your, your last name and your family line is very important. Yeah. So I kind of told him, I said, would there be a way that you would be interested in driving me out to this little town? He said, he said of course. We did the Nürburgring. Too, I know. I, I would, we'll I talk about that. that. Yeah, I was just about to bring that up. But. So so we drove out there. And well, before we left, you know, I, I brought this up to Marcel before we even left. And I remember going up to my parents' house and telling my dad, I was going to wait and just send him photos of being there. Yeah. But I, my excitement was too much to bear. So I actually <laughs> told him, I said, I said, hey, so turns out Nenderoth is 
about 45 minutes to an hour outside of Cologne and we're going there. And I remember my dad's face like lighting up and he's like, really? I said, yep. I said, I'm going to step foot in Nenderoff and yep. I'll tell you all about it. The and I could, I could tell that he was like, Whew, like my boy's going to Nenderoff. Yeah. Like, like where are our families from? Like yeah. he traced, he had done all this work and it wasn't just like ancestry.com. It's like before that he right. like dove in and dug through all this stuff and found where we were from. And I was like, I'm going there. So we went and we went on a Sunday morning and you could walk in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of the countryside of Germany. Yeah. Beautiful day too. Beautiful. Sky was open. Yeah. Sun was out. Perfect day. And uh, you could walk from one end of Nenderoff to the other in like 10 minutes. Yep. There was, there were two watering troughs in the, cent in the center of town and there was uh, like one pub. There was a church. There was, I was looking for the cemetery. There was a cemetery ultimately down around the hill. Yeah. And there were houses. That was it. There's no gas station. There's no convenience store. Yeah. There's no nothing. Like, and I don't know if you remember this or not. I've got a photo of it. There was somebody watering, like, like a horse was drinking yes. from the watering trough in yep. the center of town. And it was a Sunday morning and the whole town was in the church and you could hear them singing in the church. Yep. From the center of town. And I'm like, this is a movie. It is. This it is was. from a movie. Like I'm in... <laughs> I'm in this tiny little village that my family came from on a Sunday morning and everybody's in that church singing. There's not even anybody at the pub. Like, this is unbelievable. Yeah. So we went down to the cemetery. We walked around the church because I'm like, the cemetery is going to be at the church, but it wasn't. So we found out where it was. We walked down this hill and uh, we met a, the caretaker of the church in the graveyard there. That's right. With his son. And I told him, I said, I said, my family is from here. I'm from America and I'm here on my pilgrimage. Yeah. And he, he gave me his email and he said, you know, unfortunately this cemetery was moved here like a hundred years ago, hundred and like about a hundred years ago. And unfortunately, you know, cause they had to expand the town and it was space limiting and they didn't move some of the headstones either. And I was yeah. like, oh, that's awful. Yeah. It would have been really cool to, that was like the one bummer that they moved the graveyard. Yeah. So that was kind of a bummer, but it was really cool to meet somebody who, had grown up in that town and become like the caretaker of the town. Like he was basically like the mayor. That's right. The yeah. mayor of Nenderoth basically. And, and I got you guys to take a photo of me in front of the wooden, when you came into Nenderoth, there was a welcome to Nenderoth sign that was hand carved out of wood. Yeah. Celebrating their 1000th year anniversary in 1992 or three. Yep. Like 993 is when the town was in, yep. like its inception. <laughs> and it was like a 1,000 year anniversary in like the early 90s. And Insane. I was like, this is nuts. Yep. So that was really cool. And the Nürburgring. Yes. <laughs> we did that before or after Nenderoth. It was after the trip to War of the Z, but yeah. going to the Nürburgring was really, really, really cool. Oh, so great. We didn't get to drive on it. No. Which was a bummer. We saw cars drive on it. We saw yeah, iconic car yeah, cars. Yeah, we saw like dudes in bone stock, you know. 2.5 16 valve Cosworths yep. or one Cosworth driving it. We saw a guy in an M6 ripping the course. There was a dude in that Mark IV Super that That's was That's right, it. yeah. But there was a, some old timer in a 2002. So basically we, we walked up to the carousel. Yeah. The iconic hiked. It's carousel. It's a friggin' hike. Yes, hiked through <laughs> the woods. Saw the original, the original. So people forget that the Nürburgring was built in 1920. Yeah. 1920. 1920. In that part of, of the original... Uh, race like the actual layout of the original track had a hill climb section of it yeah which had a, i can't remember grade 20 yeah i don't, I don't remember but it 20 was 20 something percent hard grade. to I walk mean, up yeah difficult so imagine a 1920s era car yes running that yes <laughs> and it's long to the top <laughs> yeah. so that's in the middle of the woods like in the middle of the woods and you can tell that when you get to the bottom of that hill climb there's like a 180 degree bend before quick elevation change up into the carousel but when you come down out of the woods on the old track, you can see that it was a straight shot downhill to that hill climb. But they they put like a bowl 180 degree turn in there that went up to the carousel and then around and back up elevation change that met up with where the top of the hill climb was. Right. But to stand on that concrete and bring a little piece of it home, well, it was broken off. It's yeah. not like I went no. in there with a hammer. And, but I haven't Same. posted anything online that I have that little piece because it's fun. It was broken off. And, yeah. But they were selling parts of the new the Nürburgring new in the in the gift shop. And I'm like, I, it just looks like a piece of pavement. The old one is concrete with like these corrugated- old porous like, concrete. Oh my yep. gosh. Man, that was 
That was so cool. And then Marcel's ex-girlfriend, who he was with at the time, he used to work there, showed us that that camera box that's in the middle of the woods. Oh yeah, that's right. That we took photos on top yep. of that overlooked the climb to the carousel to the descent with the Nurburg Castle in the background. Yes. Yep. So I remember standing up on there and all of a sudden there's a break in the trees and you can see the, the carousel up on top. That famous, you know, the first part of the carousel was was like it's that part with the concrete the real steep yep. concrete 180 degree bend yeah but you're not supposed to drive on it you're yep. supposed to drive up on the pavement but everybody just started cutting it short and it's not smooth it is rough when you watching start... some of those cars and it and they call it dropping into the carousel yes they would the front tires would come off the ground yep smash into it go, 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 go. dude yeah. and, and then shoot out of it almost like rocking it the other way yeah and some of these guys that were going in there real hard with some low cars, all you heard was splitters going ch -ch 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 yeah. <laughs> on it. I'm like, that? So you don't get an appreciation. And a lot of my friends who are listening to this have driven the Nürburgring. Yeah. You know, friends even from America. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's you know, I haven't been across it in a car. So I, someone who's been across in the car could be like, oh, it's way rougher than yeah, you Yeah, I'm sure. But seeing, you know, standing right there. I mean, and once that one session was over, we went through the fence and stood on yes, the carousel. Stood and that on was, the carousel. That was really cool to like yes. get some photos standing on the carousel. But watching cars within 20 feet drive across that thing, you get an appreciation for how not smooth Rough. that carousel is. It's like, wow, we that's got to be tough. Yep. On a car with like a race suspension, a real stiff yeah, like yeah. race suspension, you probably, after a couple of laps, you're probably like, yeah, my car's too well. I can't dive in there anymore. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to bust something up real bad. Yeah, there were a few cars where we'd seen smash into it, and then on the next lap, they'd be up high, yep. cruising slowly. Going a little slow. <laughs> yeah. yeah, oil pressure light was blinking at, <laughs> yeah. on some turns. Like, oh, this might not be good. Yeah. So that was really cool. Super cool. And yeah, the next best thing would have been able to uh, to actually get out on the track next time we get over there. Because like Dean and a bunch of guys from England and Wales drive out there every year anyway yeah. to, to drive the Nürburgring. So yeah. I'd like to Yeah, attend. Dean was just talking about it the other day, trying to get us to go. <laughs> well, I'm going with Arndt uh, yeah, in no. Norway. I know. So Arndt has three Not of fair. the original one of 500 Evo 190s. Not fair. One's, one's the car that he takes to the Nurburgring and drives like it's supposed to be driven. And drives it mega hard. He's got like the super nice like we're gonna put that one off to the side. Yeah. And he's got one that was totaled and he bought it, but it's one of the five hundred. Still, yeah. Technically five hundred and two. Yep. Two. I'll, so I'll get into my nerdery of the of the yeah. of the Mercedes realm. But five hundred were all black mm -hmm. and they made two silver ones. Yeah. But they were the homologation evolution cars. Yeah. It bead sixteen valves. They shared, they shared the same interior as the Cosworths, with the gauge plate and just the overall interior with the dogleg box and all that. But um, in Europe, see so the U.S. market got the two point three four cylinder with the dogleg box Cosworths. Yeah, in low numbers, only like a couple thousand. Yeah, exactly. Uh, in Europe, they had the two point five sixteen valve, which was obviously the larger displacement or larger you know capacity motor. Yeah. Yep. And uh, so the Evos were the two fives, but the Evos had ITBs and. Um, dream car like so the evo one that's what aren't has aren't has the evo ones the evo two is my that's like a later dtm yeah version of the evolution but the evo two it does look extra compared to the it evo does, one yeah, but big, I, I oh yeah i love it so much and what did we see when we crossed the bridge at the nurburgring when we first entered it but underneath the bridge driving oh, yeah. was a tribute evo two that sounded like it had just gotten off the track because it yep. sounded hot and it ran around that that traffic circle the yep. roundabout and then headed back under the bridge i filmed it like i've yep. got it oh i got it i just watched it the other day oh my the gosh. sonax livery yes race tribute car oh, yeah we hadn't even entered the nurburgring <laughs> yet i'm at we're looking at the big nurburgring like entrance and i'm already losing my mind yeah all are yeah and we get up on the bridge to walk over and go into like where the shops and like the entrance to the paddocks were and there's a sonax tribute evo 2 driving it's obviously not one of the original ones. No, I but... I mean, very well could have been, but it, I don't think so. He was driving it hard on the track, so I don't think it was an actual one, but mm. it doesn't matter. Man, what an amazing experience. It, was, it fulfilled the vision. Yeah, I didn't need to be out on the track. That would have exactly. been the icing on the cake. But to see some of those, like, purebred German cars yes. running a purebred <laughs> German racetrack, yep. of one of the fam most famous ones, too, is really, really cool. Well, well, there'll be round two there for sure. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And Arndt, Arndt brings his Evo down from Norway to drive the Nürburgring like preferably once a year. And he's always said, come yeah. with me. 
so like we'll awesome. make a trip out of it. And I'm like, you don't have to pull my arm. Seriously. <laughs> wow. To ride in a real Evo around the Nurburgring? No. Dare I say maybe drive? Oh my God. I've never met Art. You know, like, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. anything's possible. <laughs> he seems really nice. <laughs> yeah, he is. He is. Uh, but anyway, that would be a dream trip too. So this has been a good episode of like, yeah, living out dream trips. Yeah. That that Absolutely. worthy that worthy trip was amazing. That was a phenomenal trip, and one I'll I'll re, I'll try to I'll try to uh, replicate numerous times, hopefully throughout my life. But one I'll never forget. That's for sure. Yeah, absolutely, hands down. Man, well, cool. That's basically it. We did a, we did two hours fifteen minutes. Nice. Yeah. Again, it feels like it goes quick when you're telling stories and. Yeah, it really does, especially this story. This is why I wanted to talk about this one. I wanted to do Solo 2014 because we just talked about Solo 2013. And I wanted to finish that up and talk about the Corvair build and taking the Corvair, driving the Corvair 30 hours down and back. But like I said, when we got up, when we got finished the last episode, I'd rather talk about this because you were on this trip. Right, yeah. And although I probably monopolized most of the mic time on this episode too, <laughs> I knew that Solo would basically be me telling you a story you've heard like 500 times. Already. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> you know I'm happy to yeah, be here. And... But I'd much rather talk about a, a trip that you and I have been on. So yeah. you've got stuff to add too. And and um, yeah, and you were there. So basically like Christopher Walken. And I was there too. <laughs> um, Absolutely. Yeah, what an incredible trip. So we'll have to do it again. We'll have to sort it out. Yep. We've got to get this whole COVID thing behind us and get somehow get things back to somewhat normal and uh, get international travel yep. back going. All the boys over there are waiting for us to come back. So. And they're waiting to come back over and here. And they're too. waiting to come here, yeah. Yeah, like Ben said, it's been killing them. Yeah. He was doing he was doing H2O with me every year for a while. That's and right. 2019 and 20, he didn't get a chance to do it. That's so right, yeah. He's itching. I'm going to try to get Ben on the podcast and. It's going to be tough because he's obviously in England. I'd much rather, and I'm not to say that it'd be a second episode, but I'd much rather do it there. I'd like to, yeah. all my friends in England, like Jamie from Players, uh, Adam from ILB, like I'd like to get all those guys on the podcast, but sit in person and have right. like that conversation and not just do it through a Zoom call or something like that. But the times we're living in right now, if I can do it logistically and still have like a good product, good end result on the audio end and video end, um, I just, I don't like watching episodes that have zoom calls. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have that like intimate setting that they're like bounce, that they're like reacting to each other in the same room. So, but I'd like to get Ben on talk about ain't dead yet. His garage and, and yeah, start doing more foreign friends and get them on the podcast, even if it has to be done remote. So yeah, absolutely. Well, limitless Corey on Instagram. Yes, sir. Underscore C O R E Y. Yep. Any other plugs? You good there? I'm good there. On the gram. <laughs> John Ludwig, J O H N dot L U D W I C K. Ludwig's Garage. Again, pre order shirts will be going out soon, next week, hopefully. So thank you for your patience there. The Governor's Club, I've been slacking on posts there. And the Rising Sea, my music page, which I've also been slacking on. Uh, You've been doing a little bit more there. I've been, I've been spending some time in here working on some music. I finally got a piece done for the podcast of the century that I'm pretty stoked on. Yep. Since we last spoke. I, I just sent a piece to Anthony Purcell, Halcyon Photo on Instagram. Follow him. He's a phenomenal, phenomenal videographer. He actually just recently posted a feature of the century too that he shot. It was the only car he shot at, in Ocean City, Maryland this year. So that was an honor That's right. Uh, to have that done. But he is putting the intro to the podcast of the century together for me. And that's why those episodes have just been lingering on my hard drive because I've been slacking on writing. I was adamant about writing the music yeah. <laughs> myself yeah. for the series. And I finally got to the point where I, yeah, I texted Anthony and I was like, listen, ma'am, we might have even been on the phone at this point. I was like, I am throwing away everything I'm trying to write because I, I've never written a synthwave song before. Right. And I wanted synthwave for it. It 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 complimented the car. The car complimented synthwave music. Anthony shooting it in Ocean City complements synthwave music. Yes. Uh, I love synthwave music, but I don't write it. So every time I sat down to build instrumentation and work with tones and then compose a song. It was way overwhelming and frustrating and I just like binned everything. So Anthony was like, well, what have you been working on? So I sent him a piece that I like, I literally had thrown in the trash. I mean, it was still on my hard drive, but I'd thrown it in the trash. And Anthony was like, dude, this is amazing. Yeah. 
And I was like, you think so? And he goes, yeah, man. Like, dang, like right, right apart. Like, let's, no, I don't, because I basically told him, I said, pick up Synthwave piece that you've got the rights to yeah. and let's just do it. I hate that these episodes are just lingering, collecting dust. Like, let's just get this over with. And I sent him that part. And he was like, dude, you have to write like this. You have to promote this, that you're writing the music for this. Yeah. So I was like, oh, I was like, okay. So I started from scratch though. I didn't, I didn't like that piece I sent him. Yeah. So I started from scratch and I focused for a couple of days. And just before we went on air here, he called me and he's like, I said, I'd sent him a piece like a day or and a half or two days ago. And he finally got back to me and he's just like, dude, this is it. Like work with some levels. Cause I hadn't, I hadn't put it through the mix yet. I right. hadn't like, I hadn't worked with levels and every, transitions need to be worked on. And he was like, dude, this is it. I'll start working on some rough drafts with what I got, you know, finish working on some levels and master it down. And and uh, he's like, I'll have it done within a week, he said. Heck yeah. And I was like, oh my gosh, are we actually this close now? <laughs> yeah. I, I felt like it was going to be another two years. I was still working on a 15 second clip. The, yeah. the clip I worked on was like a minute because I, I worked into, you know, like Synthwave always starts low with a filtering and like build, a crescendoing yep. like build. Yep. And, and I build like up. the music I write, like the indie rock ambient style music I write is along that same path. So I understand that on the composition level. Right. Um, but doing it all on the computer with keys is, is tough. Cause I, 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 I get real rough on the piano if I leave it for even like a month. Cause I'm not, I'm not traditionally, uh, trained on the piano. Right. I kind of taught myself after playing guitar for years. Yeah. So I'll learn like a little bit of form and understand how to cross over when I'm walking, but I lose that form. I lose what keys or what I just, I lose it all so fast. Yeah. So, I've got, I've got to sit there and like relearn how to just move scales around in order to even start composition. Yeah, so I know it. I'm happy that he's happy. I could talk about this all day long, <laughs> but I'm so stoked that finally that we're finally coming out with the series, which unfortunately is only like three episodes. But I'm I, I'm yeah, happy that so. I finally have the music. I got I was so ready to give up, just have him do it. But I'm I'm happy he told me to stick with it. Yeah. So. Yeah. So the Rising Sea. That's the music page. Yeah. It's not a synthwave page, but. Uh, I'm happy that I was able to like dig deep and like create something that was of that genre. Absolutely. And maybe I'll dabble with it in the future. Who knows? Yeah. Maybe there'll be, I, I always, I had a sub name called star runner and I wanted that to be like a synth wave yeah. band, but I'm like, how much more can I bite off? I don't need to, I don't need to deal with that. Yeah. I need to get a rising sea album out. Yeah. It's been 10 years and I've got like four unfinished songs that are barely mixed on my soundcloud that have just been sitting there for like eight years that's right yeah and every now and then i'll put an unfinished song up like a 30 second clip i'm like i didn't like it enough to finish it but i liked it enough to not throw it away so here it is yeah <laughs> it's on soundcloud yeah and people have been listening to that stuff every now and then i'll log on to the app and it's got like like another you know 500 views or something. it's not a big soundcloud but every now i'll notice that people have been listening to it and i'm like wow that sucks because that song <laughs> I just threw it up because, and it wasn't finished. And for years, people have been listening to that song unfinished. Yeah. Finally, I'll, I'll finish it someday. And people will be like, wow, I thought that was the whole song. Like, nope. <laughs> yeah. That was just like four measures and 30 seconds worth of nonsense. All right. Let's wrap this up. I'm All right. hungry again. We always eat. We always eat right before we record. And then we're here for like, I'm, I'm stoked on these longer ones. Yeah, no, they're awesome. Cause like I like if I'm engaged, I like listening to long podcasts. Yeah, so yeah. Hopefully, there's a few people out there that have made it this far. I knew this one was going to be a long one. I knew it was too because we we talked about we talked about the hats and like all sorts of yeah, other yeah, stuff for first. quite a while before. And I was like, we better get into this Worthy story because <laughs> if we talk about details, we're going to be here all night. Yeah. But yeah, well, that's our Worthy 2018 story. Yep. Hopefully, we'll have another one soon. Absolutely. I'll do a lot of episode. I'll do the Corvair build episode. Do the solo 2014 episode. We could probably even cram an episode into the uh, 2019 Players Classic trip, your first trip to That's the right. players. Yep. And our governor's club meet and all that. And staying with Ben up north. And... Another amazing trip. Yep. yep. So hopefully more trips soon. Hopefully more podcast episodes soon. Thanks for listening, guys. Yeah, thank you. If you're on YouTube, like, comment, subscribe. I hate saying that, but thank you guys for supporting the YouTube. I mean, the fact that you guys have even... That 2,500 of you have subscribed so far. That's unbelievable. That's man. awesome. I've tried to give it up so many times and just like one person won't let me. So I'm like, no, I keep them coming. I'm like, <laughs> okay. I'm blown away with how many people reach out to me about the podcast. That's like, awesome. I just listened to the new one. I'm like, what? Heck yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's cool, man. It's awesome, man. That's cool. Yeah. I mean, and everyone that reaches out to even say like, like I had a few other people that had just listened for the first time on the last episode and they're like, hey, you know, like heard you get in a shop. You know, like, let me know someone who runs a shop. Like, let me know if you have any questions. And yeah, 
And uh, Matt from Euromotive, I'll give that shout out. Yeah, listen to this episode. I just did some key rings for him, so thank you for the business. Glad you're stoked on the key rings. But yeah, I mean, he just reached out. He's like, hey, I just listened to the podcast, and you know, I've I've run a shop. I've been through that too. I think he he thought I was starting a shop to like work on other people's cars. And yeah. I told him that. I said, well, it's basically an extension of my father's shop. I'll yeah. still only be working on my own stuff, but with a resale in mind. Right. Like I'll, I'll be doing more of my own projects in order to sell or give away or whatever, you know? Yeah. So yeah, it's really kind of cool that although the numbers aren't, but see, this is the thing. Your numbers won't be big if you don't put out the product. Right. So the weeks or sometimes months that'll go by that I don't even put an episode out. I can't complain about the fact that there's no growth. <laughs> so when I sit here and record solo episodes, I'm like, Ooh, this won't grow. This is, this is atrocious. This it is going to be tough to get yeah. through. Well, I'd much rather, yeah, sit and talk with friends. Yeah, and, of course. And yeah, preferably have more friends do all the talking. That way there's more diversity on the podcast. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so anyway, yeah, maybe next week we'll get, I'm going to I'm gonna try to get some remote ones done too. Yeah. That'd be, that'd be good to get some remote ones done since traveling is kind of tough. But yeah, we'll talk about Players Classic and a few others too pretty soon. Sounds good. Until next time. Yeah. See you guys. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye-bye.